Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of the Mile High Game Guys Board Gaming Podcast. I'm your host Adrian. I'm Zach. And I'm Jeff. And we have with us another special guest, this time Richard. Hi, how's it going? Hello Richard. Hello Richard. Thanks for coming on the show dude. Good so, to be here. Yes, thank you. Uh, who is Richard to us? Uh, Richard is a longtime member of our weekly game group. He also runs a lot of the social media stuff. He posts a lot of things for us on Instagram. He posts all of our events. I on, mean, uh, he's also a friend. He's so. a, he is also a friend. <laughs> he's done a lot of graphic design for us, stuff for us. We had somebody do some cool posters for the show, and then he cut them into usable Facebook banners and whatnot. Yeah. Or not for the show, for the game night. The game night was long, around long before us. Well, long before the show. Yeah. Yeah. The game night was not around before. <laughs> no, me. no, the show true. existed. We just never recorded it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's an ethereal yep. presence. Yeah. One day we're just like, we should catch that. <laughs> so, Richard, uh, since you're new to the show, uh, one of the things we like to do when we have guests on is have them talk a little bit about their gaming history. Like, how did they get to be board gamers? So, broad strokes, however you want to do it. Okay. How'd you get to be a gamer? <laughs> broad strokes. Okay. Or, that was... You know, find details as you want. <laughs> Whatever you want. Go we nuts. have two hours. This to kill, is so. <laughs> this is your segment. Okay. Well, um, you know, I got to I got into board gaming uh, probably right around high school and college, uh, and back then it was a lot of what I've learned to what I've learned is referred to as Ameritrash board gaming, uh, Monopoly. You know. Scrabble, all that stuff. Uh, Monopoly is my favorite game, uh, but no one at the game night will play with me. Um, and rightfully so. <laughs> yeah, no no one in the hobby will play that game with you. <laughs> all right, you know what? For all the flack Monopoly gets, you can finish a game of Monopoly in less than like 45 minutes if everyone knows what they're doing. Yeah, well, that's only if you play by the actual rules. The, the actual printed rules. rules. that I want to do. <laughs> <laughs> but in any case, uh, so yeah, um, you know, just, it was a good way to kill time that didn't involve going out and spending a lot of money. Uh, well, <laughs> you say that now. Yeah. <laughs> Once again, Ameritrash board gaming, but yes. uh, mass mass market board gaming, yeah. maybe. Yeah. yeah, I've spent fourteen hundred dollars on Kickstarters, so <laughs> <laughs> most of which would be classified as Ameritrash. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, in any case, uh, I joined the group about uh, four years ago, I believe it was, and was introduced to many other styles of board games, and uh, just uh, been doing it since then. Every uh, every Wednesday night with you guys, so. More or less. Yeah. More or less. <laughs> yeah, a lot of times you do come just to, to drink and talk with us, which hey, is good. Hey, you know what? No, if you check my Instagram, I'm board gaming. <laughs> <laughs> sure, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because if you, if you take a picture of something happening, obviously you're the one that's doing this. Well, thing. why else would I take a picture? I don't know, Richard. Why would you? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> like you said, you your favorite game is Monopoly. Yes. Uh, which, for as much as I'm sure people scoff about that, on social media Piss off. Uh, after this episode drops you have <laughs> several different versions of monopoly including like entirely different game ones like the one where so you're like there's two different factions oh the anti-monopoly yeah yeah so what's your favorite monopoly that you have oh my favorite edition of monopoly that i have it's so hard to pick um anti-monopoly was fun it's a different twist on it but uh do you have ghettoopoly I used to have uh, Ghettoopoly, actually. Okay. But, well, when I say have, I meant I was holding on to it for a friend, and then she realized that I had it, like, you know, years later and mm -hmm. asked for it back. Uh, uh, it's expensive. It's expensive because it's not an officially licensed, you know, version. So no. it's kind of, you know, it's kind of out there. It's on the black market, as it were. So, uh, yeah. Ha ha! Because it's the ghetto. <laughs> hey, oh. <laughs> uh, I guess my favorite edition of Monopoly would have to be the, um, which one was it? Uh... The Family Guy Monopoly was one of my mm. favorites. So. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All little twists. Right on. All with paper money, no less? Yes. Okay. The, 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 uh, the electronic, the electronic uh, banking ones, mm -hmm. they're sort of, they do speed up the game. I like pulling those out for, you know, whenever I want to do a quick game where I don't have to count out all the money and deal with all that crap. But uh, Understandable. There's something about the tactile feeling of slapping someone across the face with money. So. <laughs> <laughs> if only it were in the rules. <laughs> Paper money is the bane of my existence. <laughs> that muggle money. <laughs> yeah. Get off at least 100 bucks on Amazon right now. Yep. It's There's only nine left in stock, so order soon. Yeah. <laughs> if you want a really pretty racist version of Monopoly. Yeah. Uh, well, pretty racist is an understatement. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> the first thing I saw was buying stolen properties, and I'm like, okay. Then. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's, it's pretty infamous in its uh, history. Building crack houses and projects. Paying mm -hmm. protection fees and getting carjacked are some of the elements of this game. <laughs> yeah. Not dope enough? Question mark. 
going back to your earlier point, oh it, my is, God. <laughs> yeah. it is amazing how many of those Kickstarters are just like different, like they're just their own spins on Monopoly. Yeah. Like, uh, which one was that from the crypto? Um, it was one, it was the Cthulhu themed one. Uh, Cthulhuopoly? It wasn't Cthulhuopoly. <laughs> oh, I know which one you're talking the, about. The, it was the Kickstarter that screwed everyone and Cryptozoic yeah. picked it up and basically sent out for like all the backers got free copies from Cryptozoic out of their own pocket. Yeah. I can't remember what it was called. The doom that came to Atlantic city. That's the one. Well, let's move on now that we have a little bit of background on Richard's gaming history, so y'all know where he's coming from. Uh, what have we been playing recently? Player Unknowns Battlegrounds. <laughs> yep. So playing that. <laughs> Are we including computer games in this? Not particularly, well? okay. but it's been taking over Zach and I's life. Yep. So life if you've been playing the piss out of a uh, computer game like they have, feel free, Richard. Oh, well, all right. <laughs> <laughs> have you guys played anything else besides Wait, Player Unknowns what? Battlegrounds? Yes, but... Uh, we got number one. We did. One, finally. We got, we got a winner, oh. winner chicken dinner. Yeah, we got a chicken dinner. It was a squad-based one, so mm -hmm. it was uh, me, Jeff, and two of Jeff's friends. Mm -hmm. It was great because the last little, like, the last three circle shrinks were all just in the middle of a field. Yes. And so we like, were on, like we a, were prone for, like, 15 minutes, just slowly it's moving a, it's around. A, <laughs> it's a wheat field, so you can kind of prone, and, like, no one can really see you, uh, but as soon as you stand up, it's like, oh, there's a dude, and you're dead. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, it was it was a real tight uh, thing. I, I killed two and a half guys on my own. And then you died. And then I died. Uh, but it was taking pot shots at everyone else because I kept crawling because they were lagging behind because they're slow fucks. Yep. Uh, and, <laughs> uh, and then I got just to the north of them and was able to crawl at them. And I got them with a micro Uzi and a grenade. Uh, I think my second only ever uh, downing with a grenade because the grenades really suck. They do. Uh, and then I ran at the other guy shooting him, uh, but he downed me, but he had to crouch to do it. And then someone saw him in the middle of the field and fucking killed him. And it killed the whole squad. Yep. And then it was just us three moving along. And everybody else that was left was like one person from a team. So we were able to be like, oh, there he is. Everybody would get up, shoot him dead. And then everybody thrown back down. <laughs> <laughs> there was five people left. Three of them were us. And then there was like a little one guy and another little one guy. Yeah. He was hiding behind a propane, like a giant propane tank. And eventually he, was, he just started running towards us. And we we're like, okay, he's just getting It's all up. over for you. Bam, 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 dead. Yep. So, Jeff, you said the one guy put you down. Dead. 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 So, Zach, did you make it till the very end? Oh, yeah. I, mm -hmm. I was alive. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Or both the other guys? And the only yes. kill I had was the last kill of the game. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yes, uh, everyone else survived but me. Yep. Cool. Yep. Congratulations on your chicken dinner. Yes. It was... we, we will continue to go for chicken dinners. As and and usually don't get them. <laughs> We've gotten close. Yeah. Very close a couple times, but yeah. Richard, uh, I assume by your question about whether or not you can talk about PC games, you've been playing a lot of... Uh, I've been playing Walking Dead New Frontier, uh, primarily just to go through episodes one through four again before episode five drops uh, tomorrow, actually. So. Is that the Telltale season... stuff? Yeah. Is season, that, uh, three? season three? Yeah, that's, okay. it used to be called season three, but now it's called New Frontier. Okay. Interesting. I uh, I played uh, the first one, uh, season one, and it emotionally devastated me. Absolutely. Like I remember, I finished it, yeah. and like I just kind of sat there. Uh -huh. and it was like, wow. Yep. Yep. And then I started to season two and didn't really quite get as caught up in it as I did season one, and I've fallen off the wagon a little bit. So need to yeah. get back on that game. How is uh, how is season three though? <laughs> season three is different um not to spoil too much but they ba they're basically trying to they, they were trying to keep the game a little bit fresh that's good uh, are they still using they're still using the same like basic engine that they have though they've right? been using that same engine since season one exactly and yeah. it's super old yeah, yeah. it's the same engine it, the, the, the power is just about every one of their games but mm -hmm. you know telltale has a formula that works because yeah. really you know it's storytelling more so than it is gameplay it's like a choose your own adventure book so right yeah. it's getting a little janky now well, maybe they'll update the engine soonish. I don't know. They'll be able to keep that same formula. <laughs> Bethesda got away with using the same damn engine for Fallout Four that they did with Fallout Three, and that game look how look how well that game did. So, well, not on, except on PS4. <laughs> <laughs> if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Yeah, that's true. And if it's broken, release it anyways and fix in post. <laughs> or leave it to a modding community. Day yep. one patch. Mm -hmm. Yep. Day Ooh, one patch. Yay. that's five gigabytes. <laughs> yeah, it's bigger than the game. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. Board so games. Has anyone played board games? Yes. Because you did some Wednesday game night. Yes, we went to a Zuni Street Brewing mm -hmm. again. Really yes. good. And so the one game I got to play that I'd been wanting to play for a while was uh, Sagrada. Okay. And I, I wanted to kickstart that one when it first... Right. Hit, but then I just didn't for whatever reason. Probably money. Yeah. Uh, 
And so basically this one is... Cash over everything. <laughs> uh, this is sort of a dice drafting game where you're building a stained glass window. You basically, you, you have this, I don't know, what, what are those called, those things? The little sheets that slide inside the actual cardboard A window. layout? Yeah, a layout. You have varying difficulties that you get to choose. And it goes in there, and they have a lot of them that's like, if it has a three on it, you know, you can only place threes there. If it has yellow on it, you can only place a yellow die on there. Right. But you can't have, so if I have a yellow die, like in the center, I can't have a yellow three, let's say. You can't have a yellow or a three touching that die. And so, um, no, but it, uh, well, except for diagonal. Or, orthogonally. Yeah, orthogonally. Yes. You can't have that. My favorite okay. word. Yep. It's a good uh, word. Diagonals do not. Yeah, diagonals is fine, but you get to the, you'll get to these situations where you're like, well, if I take this, if I if I take this purple one, I need it, but I can't put it next to this other space because it's a two, and that was a two next to it. And so, as you get farther and farther along the game, your 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 choices become more and more constrained. Mm-hmm. Okay. You also have uh, three public goals that everybody's going for, which are like you know sets of all the different sets of different numbers, sets of colors, like uh, every set of fives and sixes, yeah. every set of twos and fours. And... But, uh, but then you also have a, a, a secret card that's like you get one point for every blue pip that you have. So, so if you have you, a bunch of blue sixes. That's worth a bunch of points to yep. you too. It's, okay. Yeah, and so. Uh, it, it took like 30 minutes, if yeah. that. Mm-hmm. And there, there's also a couple other cards that can uh, allow you to change how your dice play. Because you can have one where it's like you, you activate it and then you get to take a die and then flip it over to whatever its corresponding number is on the opposite side. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, but those, those or- tokens that you use are worth one point at the end of the game. And after someone has activated... A token or a card for one token. The next person who wants to do it has to spend two tokens and then three tokens, and so it gets like longer, on, longer around the game. As people start using those, it gets harder and harder to use them. And so near the end, you're just like, oh god, I need like two dice that need to be this. Like I needed yeah. a green two and a purple five, <laughs> and when we rolled, there were two green twos and two purple fives, and I was like, fuck yes, <laughs> no one could possibly make this not happen yep. for me. Uh, and how many of those uh, little power tokens you get depends on the difficulty of the stained glass window you chose. So yeah. if it's a difficulty, I think it goes up to seven. Six yes, that seven. sounds about right. Uh, but it can go all the way down to like two or three. Can you play with multiple people like having different difficulties? Yes. Ones? yes. So you get, you, kind you, of scale? you get two cards and they're double-sided and you just choose the 21. Mm-hmm. So, so you could do something more like... If there's somebody who's brand new to the game, give them a lower difficulty. If somebody's experienced, give them a higher difficulty. Yeah, and it does it doesn't actually change the amount. Yeah, you don't you don't get any more or less. I, I guess you technically get more points if you didn't use your pips or your uh, your tokens tokens. Uh, but I mean that's a difference of like four points. Yeah, which isn't. Yeah, I mean I guess there the games were pretty close in there. So mm-hmm. eh. cool. Uh, I I liked it. I liked I at Geekway we played role player. Yes, and I've heard like this is a. Less complicated version of that, but I think in the end I liked it more. Okay. Mainly because it was shorter, and I guess I liked the theme of building the stained glass window more than just building a D and D character. Fair enough. Because I wasn't like I built a stained glass window. That's oh, done. That's good. Right. Not just like I built this character. Well, what do I do with him? You just build him. That's it. Oh, okay. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah. Cool. Richard, did you go to game night this week? I did, but only briefly. Okay. Yeah. Um, I went to a separate game night. We branched out a little bit this week. Um, we paired up with Heavy Cardboard Podcast and their uh, yearly Memorial Day convention for HeavyCon and did an event out at a brewery by the hotel where HeavyCon was being hosted and had a bunch of heavy gamers come out. Was it Peak to Peak? Peak to Peak Brewing, peak to peak. yes. A uh, good chunk of the people just kind of came out and socialized. They used it kind of as a meet and greet for like new people who were to the con. But there were a few people who played games, uh, including myself. I played Indonesia, uh, which I first played at Geekway. And then I played it again there. And I now own a copy because holy shit, Indonesia is really good. Uh, so it's another splatter game. Really kind of complex, abstract Hard have, to grasp. It's not really have abstract. They, have they made any other games that are like that before? Uh, all of them. Oh, weird. Yeah, that's kind of <laughs> Splatter's thing. So this one, basically, you are taking on the role of a colonial power, kind of. Like, you don't have a specific... The Dutch. Yeah, you're basically <laughs> like a version of the Dutch East Indie company. You At the start of the game, there's it plays out over three errors. And in the first error, there's a handful of companies that are available to be selected. And you can... 
initially only control one company, but you can eventually build that up to where you can control five. And then you can build up your merger ability to where you can start merging companies into bigger and bigger companies over multiple eras. And you just try and build up the largest shipping trading company uh, over the map and make the most money. And Cash over everything. Yeah. It is absolutely brutal um trying to fend off hostile take which is like if i have my merger ability built up to where i can merge like a company like if i have a level three merger so i can merge a level two and a level one or you know whatever Mm -hmm. and zach and jeff have a company that's the same company like they both have a spice company and i'm like you know they're both making too much money off that spice company and i'm not making any money off of it let's merge that and then i get a bid on the new merged company from their two companies so i could effectively steal both of their companies and make it my own it's vicious and brutal and i always get way too into the merging and i merge enough that it kills me like i end up losing the game yeah because that's what happened when you told us last week yeah same thing happened on wednesday it did yeah you got (laughs) destroyed i got i got way too ambitious merging and made bad mergers and ended up costing myself the game yep exact same thing capitalism at its best yeah so holy crap indonesia is really good i like it a whole lot that's why you now own it that is why I now own it. Yes. And I got it signed by Yarun, which is one of the two main people from Splatter. He was at HeavyCon. Nice. So he signed my food chain and my Indonesia. Awesome. Uh, yeah. Where did he sign it? Inside the box nice. top. So like Good you choice. open the box top, you flip it up, and there's now enjoy never, never, signed Yarun. Never do it on covers, people. No. Unless it's going to sit in a case for the rest of the time. <laughs> no. You want to play that $110 game. Right. Yeah. Now I just have to get yours to sign it. Uh, but I don't know when that will be able to happen. Hopefully, maybe he'll come to HeavyCon next year. But uh, And then I played a whole lot of games at HeavyCon. And yeah, you I'm did. not going to talk about all of them. Um, they were he, all heavy games. You don't games. want me and Jeff to kill ourselves. Like right. That. And <laughs> maybe Richard, too. You, you you all might just glassy eye fall out of your chair. Well, that's what he'll do. But I, yeah. Me and and I'll just will... keep talking. Yeah, exactly. I know how to make a new set of shoelaces. <laughs> Yeah, so I played a whole bunch of games at HeavyCon. Uh, I mean, there's a ton of them. They were all really good. I played uh, multiple games of Food Chain Magnate. I played Vino's Deluxe with four players, which it is viciously tight at four players. Um, Just trying to find spaces you can move to and balancing paying money versus doing something that doesn't cost a whole lot of money. All of that. Really ridiculous. Got to play Kanban, the game I picked up from Brandon from What Did You Play This Week? I got to play that, and that was really good. I think it's definitely Vital Asserta's heaviest game that I've played. Um, That's saying something. Yeah. <laughs> yes, it's heavier than, certainly heavier than both Galarist and Vinos, I think. Wow. Um, I don't know about Lisboa. I've only played it the one time, and so I need more experience with that before I'm... Coming soon. Very soon. Yeah. Had a great time. It was four days of heavy gaming did you, and was amazing. Did you forget one game that you played? Something starting with terraforming and then uh, well Mars? yeah, I pl- I, oh, yes. So I did I got it I played <laughs> terraforming Mars. Uh-huh. I'm back on the terraforming Mars train. Okay, good. Uh, good. good. Uh, there was my first play of it in 2017. I'd like to ride that train at some point. I think it's a fun train. And ride it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, I think it was actually hard. my first play of it since we named it our 2016 best of. Uh, I got to play with Brian, uh, who runs the board game group web uh, Facebook page. Okay. Uh, Brandon from Brawling Brothers and a couple other guys from the board game group web page, uh, Facebook group. So you played five player? Yes. Okay. And how many green cards did you end up having? Uh, <laughs> like five. 32 or Jesus something? Christ. Holy God. <laughs> it was a lot. It was. I saw the picture, but I didn't realize it was 32. It was a ton. Are you sure it wasn't 37? <laughs> that was a clerk's joke. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> so it was It was actually 30-some. It was 22. Oh. Uh, that is that is a lot less. <laughs> it's less than 37. It's still a ridiculous amount of green cards. Not as, not as ridiculous. It was like 22 though. green cards, like four red events, and like three blue like buildings. Well, 22 is like, that's a lot of green cards. 35 is like, holy, what the fuck did people... How, yeah. how can you have that many cards in the game? <laughs> what, was I, your, what was your hot strat? I won. What was I Engine. going for? So, well, so my company that I founded was the one where you can buy earth tags for two less. Mm-hmm. And one of the first things, or for three less. Terracor. Terracor, mm-hmm. yeah. So you can buy earth tags for three less. And then I immediately got a card out that was an earth card that was you can buy for two less. So I could buy earth cards for five Did less. you start with that? 
Yes. No. Did, okay. Good. No one passed. No me one that. passed me. Okay. That. Good. And, and, and draft you? Oh yeah. Good. I got like four Earth cards the rest of the yep. game. Yep. And those were mostly ones that I drew. Uh, they and there was a couple times like one of the times the player immediate to my right when we were pl- passing to the right, he was like, "Oh, I have the one that lets you score for Earth tags. It can't make it to you. Sorry." Yep. <laughs> but yeah, I ended up amazingly pulling out a victory there. I late in the game managed to get a solid uh greenery engine going and i had the capital city with all the water and i had another regular city and i surrounded both of them completely with greenery yeah that gets you a lot of points greenery gets That's you a ton 12 of points, points right yep. there for each one and then i had a couple other solid uh scoring like most of those green cards were points cards nice so i had a huge card score did you have the dust seals I did not have dust seals. That one got by me. <laughs> did anybody have it, or did it? My favorite thing to do is to have that one show up at end game. Yeah, because it's like three percent oxygen or less is what you need for that. Yeah, yeah. and so you're like worthless card, the worst card ever, because yeah. it's just a point too, and you're mm-hmm. like, well, this doesn't do anything. Womp womp. Yep. Uh, yeah, I don't remember if it, I ended up coming out or not, but mm-hmm. uh, it was a whole lot of fun. The group that I was playing with was a blast. It was. I really enjoyed it. We have so. gotten our prerequisite. Terraforming Mars talk in for this yes. episode. Yeah. First mention. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I played a brutal game of tramways that was just, it was horrible, but it ended up being the final scores were like 50, 49, 48. Were you, uh, was that on the uh, Denver map that you got? No. Oh, okay. uh, we thought about playing the Denver map, but it's got some different rules and stuff, and we weren't, one okay. of the guys was new, Super and familiar. so we decided to do base yeah. game okay. for that one, especially because they both had to be done by like one o'clock, so we had to play in two hours so they could go play 18xx. So there was a ton of 18xx, and like I'd been thinking leading up to, like, oh, maybe I'll try 18xx. And I saw 18xx, and oh god, I'm not ready. I just know <laughs> I'm not ready. That at some point that'll come, but not yet. Play Arkwright first, and then see how. Yeah, you feel after exactly. I uh, need to play more Age of Steam. So, but uh, yeah, it was a whole bunch of fun. I got to meet Jim from Punching Cardboard, Ambi from Board Game Blitz, Travis, low player count. Brandon from Brawling Brothers, obviously Edward and Amanda from Heavy Cardboard. You finally met him. <laughs> finally met him. No. Only been on multiple live streams with them yeah. playing board they games. Just, oh. You guys didn't say anything to each other when you were Right, <laughs> exactly. Um, I didn't interact with them at all. Did this replace Geekway for your favorite con? It did. I'm <laughs> color be surprised, yeah. I, it was actually, I was talking to Edward about that uh, before I was leaving Sunday as it was all wrapping up. I was like, yeah, it was funny. Like Last weekend was Geekway, and I was like, holy shit, this has like, been my favorite con. And then a week later, I do Heavy Con. It's like, this is my favorite con. So, yeah, eager I, I to go figured back. that was going to happen. So, next year, I'm staying at the hotel. I'm not driving 30 minutes each way every day, four days in a row. Not to mention you know, just the gas from driving 20 miles. Dude, each just way. Uber it, man. <laughs> no, God, no. That would have been like a $40 Uber each way. <laughs> Fuck that. I could, yeah, no, I'll get a hotel room next year. Okay, so. maybe next. No, probably not. I don't know. We'll see. Is it going to be on Memorial Day? Again? It's always Memorial Day. Okay. Is Twilight Imperium heavy enough? Uh, no one played Twilight Imperium. Okay. So that's not the question that he asked. I don't think so. <laughs> not not allowed within the. But at the same time, like, I saw Millennium con? Blades played. I saw Race for the Galaxy played. Uh, you know, so it depends. Re- I played Reef Encounter, which isn't particularly heavy. Okay. Your parrotfish eating coral reefs is an interesting game. That's. Indeed, an interesting subject for a board game. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it was a whole bunch of fun. So that's okay. that's all the games that I've played. Uh, I could go more into depth, but I'm nope. sure you could. Yeah, but don't. <laughs> Richard. Yes. You played games, <laughs> yes. not at game night, but otherwise. Yes, I have actually. Uh, just this uh, just this past weekend, actually, we um, had some folks over to watch Godfather Part Two, and after we finished it, that's uh, an interesting event. One of my friends is watching one of those like hundred best movies ah, okay. lists ever, and she's uh, blogging about it. So, okay. you know, uh, Godfather Two yeah. Part Two party. Yeah. Okay. So we were watching Godfather Part Two, and uh, we finished the movie, and we're trying to figure out what to do. And so uh, we decided to play Family Business, a uh, very fun card game about uh, battling organized crime families. Uh, so yeah, that that one's actually a favorite of mine. It's uh, kind of a staple. Uh, I bring it to almost every game night. Haven't played in a while at game night. No, no, you haven't. I, I do remember playing it though, and I did enjoy it. Yeah, it's very fun. 
And then after that, uh, we decided to break out Grifters, a game I actually picked up at one of our board game nights, oh, all yeah. day events. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, one of our all day events. And uh, it was actually still sealed new in box sitting under my you know coffee table. <laughs> and so we decided to give it a try. And that game was super fun. It was my first time playing. And uh, it felt very much like uh, watching Leverage, the uh, old, I think, TNT show or something. Oh, yeah. yeah. I remember that show. Yeah. So it's, you know, uh, you're, you, you're, you're pulling off capers or doing jobs that requires you to either you know, build out your team of, uh, you know, uh, master, like the masterminds, the hackers, the, uh, thieves, the, the, the muscle, the, the, the brawn, brawn. The brawn. Yeah. 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 The brawn. So it was, it was very much, uh, it, it felt very fun. It was, uh, I really enjoyed the artwork, the card artwork. Cause it's from the same folks who did a uh, coup and resistance. It's part of the dystopian universe. Yeah. It yeah. looks really nice. I the art we, on it does. I think we've talked about it previously, but it was quite some time ago. Yes. Yeah. Uh, probably right around. Cause we got, we all got Gen it at Con. Gen Con. Yep. So. Yeah. Because that was one of the top games there. Yes. Yeah, it's a super fun game. I will I, I will admit that, honestly, reading through the instruction manual was not helpful at all. Trying to figure out how to play the game just off of the instructions, it, it made some people in our group a little bit more confused than anything else. So we just decided to d- dive in and give it a, go, give gotcha. it a go. The verbiage on the uh, in the instruction manual could use some work, honestly. Yeah. So. I think we met on accident one of the designers. Yes, we did. We were at the Dice Tower booth at Gen Con. Yep. And then there was a guy just talking to one of the Dice Tower booth workers, and he was like, oh, yeah, blah, grifters. And then we were like, hey. We just picked that up. We just picked it up. Thanks. And he's like, I made that. <laughs> like, and, awesome. Yeah. And we went nuts over it. We did. Uh, there for a while. We played the absolute pants off of that game. Uh, I think we came up with some strategies that made the game not fun anymore, <laughs> and so we stopped playing. <laughs> <laughs> At least for me, yeah. yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's a good game. Yeah. I, yeah, I should, I should play that game more. Well, you got game night, so yeah. I'm definitely bringing I, it to the next game night. There yeah, you go. I, it, it's definitely one of the more underrated games from last year. I would say. Yeah. Yeah. Right on. Me, you I have do. to talk about games. You do. Is there you a body minute? There is. Do you want to talk about games first? I'm going to talk about games real quick. Okay. I put. We played Gloom, Gloomhaven. Zach. And yes, I did. and Ant and uh, Julie. It was going um, horribly until we won. <laughs> it was going yes, as is Gloomhaven. Um, <laughs> We, we also sort of had to relearn Gloomhaven because we hadn't played in a little while and we need to play it more as I wink silently towards Adrian. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Gloomhaven's still real fun. Once we started getting back into it, we sort of under, re-understood the rules yeah. um, about initiative and the tops and bottoms of cars. That That is a dense game. Mm-hmm. Um, the scenario was fun. Uh, it's just the second one, second scenario. Luckily, we got to stun lock the boss. Yeah. So he wouldn't, he wouldn't <laughs> keep summoning new enemies for us to fight and or opening doors to murder us with more enemies yeah there's a yeah there's a lot of cards in that game there's a lot of mechanics there's a lot of uh there's a lot of i don't know plate spinning you could call it of things that you have to do but once you get it all out it's it's nice uh especially since i got that insert yeah that insert was really nice that insert is very nice hey adrian I want a copy. <laughs> so at HeavyCon, that was one thing I forgot to mention in my HeavyCon discussion. Uh, they had a big door prize giveaway thing where, like, you came in, you got a bag of swag, and inside of it was a card for, like, what game you won. And so I won Gloomhaven, which was donated by Cephalofair. They donated two copies. Wow. Uh, and unfortunately, I missed out, so I was trying to trade it away because I knew Jeff already had his super tricked out copy, and mm-hmm. so I didn't feel like I needed a copy. That is one game that you don't need two copies of in no. a game group. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so I, I was trying to trade it for an acrony because holy shit, I want an acrony. Uh, but I couldn't do that. And so then I was looking for other trades and I missed out by maybe an hour on trading it for a deluxified edition of Yokohama, uh, which I think would have been a good trade because then we yeah, had two I'd, copies of Yokohama and I'd could have passed one on to you guys or yeah. given it away or yeah. done something with it. Yeah. I'd say Gloomhaven's like on a good, cool stuff sale, 84 bucks. The deluxified version of Yokohama is unattainable at this yeah. point, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Would have been a good trade. Yeah. But the other guy who got Gloomhaven made that trade before me. <laughs> womp womp. Yeah. Yeah, maybe maybe we'll do something with Gloomhaven's extra copy. We're sometime trying to figure future. out what to do with it. Yeah. We have an extra copy of Gloomhaven. Just sitting around doing sitting nothing. Sitting around. Uh, <laughs> it's heavy. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's quite weighty. It's much heavier when you put the insert in it. It is. That thing is ridiculous. And then Zach asked me, when are you going to sleeve these? Yep. And I was like, do I want to add another 20 pounds of sleeves to the game? Yes, <laughs> and uh, hundred dollars to it. The game yeah. cost. <laughs> God, <laughs> it's like all the cards I haven't used yet. I don't even know how I'm going to use them. There's so many cards in there. Um, but the big game I want to talk about: Shadow War Armageddon, the new edition of Necromunda. 
Ant and I jury rigged a uh, play field, a 3D terrain play field out of like box tops and rulers and cans of jackfruit. Uh, Zach, I think, witnessed it yes, uh, I when did. he walked in to play Gloomhaven. It is exactly like Necromunda was uh, the last time I played it. I played, uh, except the 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 uh, armies are, are very different. You don't have the gangs of uh, the Hive anymore. It's straight up armies of 40k. You've got guard. You've got space marine or sc- space marine scouts, um, Tyranids, uh, all the Tau. Um, you can basically use regular 40k stuff in there. Um, I I I like it more of a shooty game. Uh-huh. Um, and bought the like cheapest army that he could find which was witches from dark eldar Mm -hmm. and they're more of a close combat and close combat rules and necromunda kind of suck it's all combat resolution Uh, roll as many dice as you have attacks add some combat resolution and the difference between your scores is how many wounds you do and in 40k it's like weapon skill versus weapon skill and throwing a bunch of dice and stuff like that necromunda as a rule set was made to be these like hive gangs just shooting each other with maybe like one close combat guy that could get in there. Gotcha. And when you have a whole team of close combat guys, it kind of thins down and gets kind of boring. Okay. But, but the, but the rule sets are, are good for shooting. Uh, I was guard, uh, Imperial guard or whatever the hell they call them now. Uh, cause they had to change the name because of licensing, I guess. Okay. Um, still fun. Um, we might make a campaign out of it. Nice. Yeah. If we get enough interest, cause there is campaign rules and skills and all that fun stuff. Okay. Yeah. Right on. And then on to Blood Bowl, uh, which is a new, another new edition of uh, Bloody Games Workshop. Bloody Minute. Uh, Bloody Minute, yes. Uh, so I played Blood Bowl. The War Bosses finally won a game. I am now 1, 4, and 0, oh, uh, including preseason. Uh, I won against Wood Elves. Uh, my last game last week was 2-1 to one, uh, with a loss. Uh, this game what, which went much better for me, mostly because his uh, war dancers were out. Uh, due to their previous injuries, so I didn't have to deal with the leapy elfy bullshit that they always do. It was pretty uneventful, uh, except for where I knocked six of his dudes into the crowd. Uh, I knocked him off the edge of the board. Oh, Jesus. Um, downside was I didn't get any injuries off of it. What? They all went KO, which is an eight or nine, or they went one through seven for a stun, which just puts him right back in the reserve. So the next kick off, they'll just get to come back on the board. I had most of his dudes off the board, but they were all KOs or all reserves, and they just all came back out in the, for the second half. Uh, he got an elfy bullshit uh, two-turn score um, <laughs> on turn two of the second half. Uh, he had also done another one in the beginning, uh, turn three of the first half, where he threw the ball at my end zone just to get it away from my team. Thankfully, I was able to knock out his thrower before he could, on his next turn, just run up to it and pick it up and score. Gotcha. Because you could... like. It's a pass that missed and would cause a turnover, but it's right next to the end zone. So if his guy survives, he can just run over and get it. Right. Um, sort of like kicking the ball in the distance. But my team's so slow. And then it was another six-turn trudge to score. <laughs> and then, uh, then he scored in two turns. And then it was my seven-turn trudge to score. Because <laughs> um, I am very slow, but uh, very high armor. Ended up being two to one. I only got one casualty. He got zero casualties. Oh, wow. Yeah. It was it was low casualty, low star player point game. Uh, I got a black work blocker who's super high strength, strength four, uh, and low agility roll, a plus agility roll, which is useless because he's not going to pick up the ball. He's only movement four, uh, so I gave him a card. My next game is against the Necromantic. It's Frank. He's got werewolves and Frankensteins. Uh, he is now last place in the league, and I am uh, right in the dead center, right in the middle. Nice. Yeah. Cool. Think you're going to make a late late season push for first? Well, against the Necromantic, the Dra- Drakenhof Dynamo, his uh, werewolves have claw, which turned my armor to seven from nine on any armor roll. So we'll see what his werewolves do in the next game. I think that covers pretty much everything we've been playing. Anything anybody wanted to add? No. We need to wrap this up so I can go play more Battlegrounds. So. True. <laughs> yeah, yeah, very true. Well, and I think you almost put Richard to sleep with the Blood Bowl talk. That's fine. So. Ant is very excited right now. Oh, I'm sure. <laughs> yes. Enthralled, no less. Quite giddy. Yes. I was just engaging in some social media work. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I did nothing to the uh, to Pumpkin Dance Squad, which was the Wood Elves I played against. Uh, unfortunately, they uh, I did not cause any casualties to them for whoever they play next. Well, we can move on, I think, then to our news and Kickstarter segment. Yes. Right? 
News and Kickstarter, starting with news. Uh, it's mostly cool mini or not news. Yeah. Um, pretty much top to bottom. Cool mini or not has uh, announced a minimum price discount for any retailer that wants to sell their stuff. Asmodee did this fairly recently. ILO also just did it. ILO also just did it. ILO, cool mini or not, has updated theirs. Yes. I guess. Yeah. Both. Yeah. Uh, so the interesting thing with both of these... Um, both ILOs and Cool Minis, uh, looking into them a little bit deeper. Initially, when I heard about this uh, over the weekend, I caught a little bit of buzz about it uh, in between heavy games. And I was initially kind of put off because I think this whole like min- minimum pricing stuff is shenanigans. You know, like, oh, yeah, no matter how shitty our game is or how unpopular it is, you always have to charge near full price. Seems sketchy to me. They're pretty much saying that you can only ever sell it at 80% of its MSRP. Yeah. Uh, especially that's like, what's known as price fixing yep. exactly and especially when you read over like cool mini or not's one they said by unilaterally imposing restrictions on minimum prices advertised by the new distribution network and retail partners cool mini or not's products perceived value in the customer's eyes will be enhanced which is in the best interest of consumers and cmon's partners that sounds like a bunch of bullshit. It does. <laughs> That's, just That's like, corporate doublespeak is what yeah. that is. Yeah. Uh, now, looking into it a bit more, the exact terms of both of their MAPPs, maps, you it's your advertised price outside of the store. In-store pricing is not set and not restricted in any way. So a local board game store like... Uh, you know how black and red they do. They have the price, and then every sticker they have has an immediate minus twenty percent. Yeah, they could or fifteen do, or whatever. Yeah, they could do whatever they wanted. You know, time well spent could still do a fifty percent off Black Friday sale. You know, they just can't advertise. Well, time well spent couldn't because they don't have a physical location. Yet. Right. Wizard's Chest could do an in-store where you walk in and they're like, "Hey, we're having a special sale. This game's now fifty percent off." But where which you makes get, it a little better. But, but where you get all those deals are online. Yeah, so, not in store. And, so, it's, and it's to it's to hurt, especially like third-party Amazon retailers. Like a lot of this stuff is in response to those guys selling things for super cheap. Right. Yeah. They think they have a a premium product, and so they want premium prices for it. So yeah, maybe I'll just give them less money over time. <laughs> well, I'm certainly starting to give Simon less money. Uh, yeah. ILO, I don't give them a lot of money to begin with because their games aren't very expensive. So I don't know what a minimum price does for them. Like, sure, set a minimum price for $20 for Welcome to the Dungeon. Yeah. Nah. Um, but more and more places are starting to be like, hey, we want less discounts online and want people to pay more money for our products. Yeah. But Well, especially brick and mortar stores that just can't compete with online. Yeah. So they want online to not dominate. Yeah. You know, yeah. Which, I don't know, I'm torn. I like to s- support local businesses and business owners, but at the same time, I'm not about paying more money for the same product. Like, if I don't get something out of the deal, like, yeah, if it's a cool store that does cool events and other things to make it worth supporting them, I'm for it. But I'm not going to pay, you know, 10% over MSRP just because you happen to be in my same town. Cash over everything. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> it is the theme of this episode, apparently. Yes. <laughs> episode 48, Cash Over Everything. Yep. yep. <laughs> we need fun titles for our episodes again. <laughs> we do need to go back to that. Up next in news, um, Cool Men You're Not has released a Zombicide Black Plague app. Um, this one not so much replaces Black Plague, but your player boards and the spawn deck and stuff like that. Yeah, it's very much a companion app. It's not Black Plague, the app. I'm just disappointed this for Black Plague. I'd much rather it be for regular Zombicide because that's the only one I care to play. And there's so much content to that that you would love to not have to shuffle all those decks together. Or exactly. Like, you've made, like, a custom spawn deck at this point. Yeah, both my item deck and spawn deck for Zombicide are custom because <laughs> when you have three base games and three expansions plus a bunch of mini boxes and stuff, it just gets out of control. How do y'all feel about companion apps? Uh, overall, I mean, uh, I mean, it depends on the game and whether or not it's a game that needs one. I feel like Black Plague, I don't think needs one at this point. However, based on beside, I would absolutely love a companion app. The worst thing is it sounds like this one, it would be something where almost everybody playing would need to have it because it manages like your player board. And your um, inventory and yeah. that stuff. You could probably get away with just one person having it for the, the, the item decks and the spawn decks. But 
meh. Um, it's like Crystal Chronicles on the GameCube. Oh, God, that was horrible. <laughs> just, just four Game Boy Advances yep. and four connection cables, yep. and then you can play this game four player. Hooray. And then one of you just gets to hold a gem thing the whole time while mm-hmm. everyone else actually does stuff. Yep. And you also need a house to put it all in, and yep. you, got, you got to pay hookers to play with you because you're not going to play alone. I mean, so now you're turning tricks in the men's room at the Olive Garden just to play the stupid game. That sounds uh, like real life. that is something that actually happened Mm -hmm. uh but overall to answer your question richard i mean like you said depending on the game like mansions of madness it was a huge addition adding the the app support but Uh, like dead of winter i've never used it the crossroads one yeah Yeah. it's not a big deal i think it's for me it's just mainly if it's well done yeah and then if it actually adds something to the game if it either makes it simpler Easier to set yeah, up. Yeah, easier to set up. At less makes it less fiddly. Adds, like you said, Mansions Madness adds actual thematic and, things and to the game. And it's free. Yeah. I'm not going to pay for a companion app for a game that I already own, especially well, if the app doesn't do anything I'll, new. I'll, if it does something amazing, I may pay a couple bucks for it. Yeah. But. Unless you want those new scenarios. Yeah. The Thank Bioshock you. Infinite board game could have used a companion app, honestly. <laughs> That's what you're saying, that that thing's all just a bunch of ridiculous math that really takes you out of the game. I think I yeah. got that game for $5 on a sale. He did, yeah. yeah. Wow. <laughs> Somebody made a really basic... Like not necessarily an app, but like a little web page calculator for food chain magnate. I saw oh, that, yeah. so nice. that you can put in like oh yeah, like your stuff and it automatically and... calculates how much you earn for each location. Nice, the C C CFO CFO. Although that one, I think it's a, that one you shouldn't do that because it would round down there. Oh. But it's the fifty t- percent of the total you earn that round. So you should wait until the entire round add up everything you get, and mm-hmm. then take fifty percent more. So. That part um, I wouldn't use, but the rest of it was solid. We just oh. round down those fractions of the penny. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> How much is the the black play gap? It's not. It's free. Oh, it's well, you know what? Can't bitch about things that are free. I mean, you, you can. Yeah, the, the, dude, that's all, that's all the internet is. <laughs> yeah. We did for at least four minutes. <laughs> <Yeah>. So. <laughs> Immediately proven wrong before you even said the statement. <laughs> yep. False. Yep. Uh, that's it for news, right? Yeah, more or yep. less. Yep. We go on to Kickstarter. Mm-hmm. Uh, starting with Zombicide Green Horde. Uh, it will be launching its Kickstarter yesterday, as you are hearing this. <laughs> um, Tomorrow for us. Yes. Um, at 3 p.m. Eastern. So yesterday. it's usually their, their standard time. Yeah. Yep. It'll, it'll, there'll probably be a hundred dollars pledge for it, and uh, at least, and then probably a hundred fifty dollar one too for that and another expansion. And then uh, it has probably already broken at least eight stretch goals by the time you hear this. Yep, <laughs> it is well funded. It is well on its way to setting a new Simon record. Um, yep. So this one just basically adds. It's like, Black Plague, but not the homicide. Yeah, right? yeah. It's it's it, yeah. It's for Black Plague, and it adds like what orcs. Why, why does it even? Why does it say nothing about Black Plague? Uh, I don't know because yeah. I think this it's the Black Plague's just the way that they're going now. I think. Yeah. No, they've said that they're coming back. To oh, the they are. Mo- oh, okay. Yeah. Mm. I do think that it, but I mean, at that point, like Zombicide, Black Plague, Green Horde, like yeah. you just get this ridiculous chain of. It definitely. Um, it looks like this one's going to add a dragon, which is pretty cool. Yeah. So like. In the first Black Plague, there was Dragon Bile that you could light on fire to blow up spaces. Yeah. And like they even said they're like curious where the Dragon yeah. Bile came from. Yeah. Well, now there's a dragon. Hooray! Yeah. I'm sure that mini would look pretty cool. I'm sure it will look awesome. They got good minis. Whether this they're... will be a true test of my strength at yeah. resisting all things Simon. Luckily, they did it at a time when I am cash poor. Oh, yeah. So... It'll make that a lot easier to avoid. Indeed. Not having extra money. You know, it occurs to me that your problems could be solved if you simply had more money. It's true. Have you ever tried that, Adrian? You know, I've thought about it, but I'm not sure how to go about that. Could somebody I, please explain to me how to just uh, well, I, have I more did that. I was just like, I don't have any money. I should get more money. And then I got more money. It's great. <laughs> I robbed a jewelry That's store. That's exactly <laughs> how that worked. Wasn't it, that? Yes, it was. <laughs> <laughs> Cash over everything. <laughs> really is the theme of this episode yeah, absolutely <laughs> uh on to i mean that's all kickstarter really is uh, yes <laughs> on to our first kickstarter that exists currently kitchen rush uh from artipia artipia it's already well funded 45k of its 20k goal 747 backers a little about three weeks to go and a 55 dollar pledge uh looks like it's releasing at essen 2017 that sounds about right yeah, yeah. Which is a, a nice turnaround for a Kickstarter for once. That's yeah, that's not too yeah. shabby. But yeah, it looks pretty cool. It's a uh, it takes place over four four minute rounds, 
and uh, you're basically running a, ki- a kitchen restaurant, and it's in real time because it's worker placement, but your worker placements are timers, sand timers, so, ah. and it's like 30 seconds, so it's you, if you're taking an order from somebody at the waiter, you take the order, but then you can't use that worker again until that 30 minutes is done. And so there are kitchen... Four minutes is done, you mean? 30 seconds. 30 seconds is 30 done. 30 seconds. You yeah. said 30 minutes. Yeah, no, it's... You can place... That would be a very once. long game. <laughs> yeah, when 30 seconds is done. If it replaces our timers... <laughs> Did we win? sits there and stares at each other <laughs> for 30 minutes. <laughs> just like a real kitchen. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, and, and then... It just seems... It seems pretty cool. I like I liked that idea a lot that it's... It's worker placement, but it's real time. So you have to be like, all right, you know, place it, and you're counting. You're like, we really need to clean these dishes so we can actually get, we can serve more people. And it's just like, I know, man, but the time, I've got five seconds less till those dishes are clean. And you're like, God damn it. So is it a co op? Yes. Okay. It's also from the designer of uh, Anachrony, David uh, Turgzi. Oh. Yeah. And Days of Ire, Budapest. Okay. Broken a bunch of stretch, stretch goals for, you know, custom wooden fish tokens. And fish order cards. Uh, this game reminds me a lot of Overcooked on. Uh, yes, that's what people kept referencing to. Computer and console gaming systems. Um, it looks very interesting. Uh, you can even buy a uh, a digital countdown timer for four bucks with it. Oh well, then. Uh, I will say the box art looks atrocious. Yeah. I really don't like the box art at all. I think it's all right. It doesn't like you, Adrian. That's <laughs> probably true. Like most of us. <sighs> <laughs> Indeed. Uh, yeah, so you got about three weeks left to pledge for that if you so wish. Right on. Yeah. Uh, on up. to Role Player Monsters and Minions expansion <laughs> from uh, TW Games. Uh, extremely funded, 201K of its 65K goal, over 2,800 backers, and this one's got about two weeks to go. Uh, the expansion is going to cost you 12 bucks, and the expansion plus the main game is going to cost you 39 bucks. That is so it's $39 for the actual expansion, $12 for the oh, print sorry. play. Yes, uh, I'm sorry. $39 for the expansion, $89 for the expansion, and the main base game. Yes. No, thank you. <laughs> it is kind of expensive. Yeah. Uh, so Adrian and I played that game at yep. Geekway, Geekway. And it's. And bas- Paul. Yeah, and Paul. Uh, basically, it's a, it's another dice drafting game where you're trying to build up your char- your D and D character with stats, uh, with the dice representing the, the total number of your stats. So if you had you know three fives on your strength, you have a strength of fifteen, etc., like that. And why do you keep looking at me when you say that? As if I don't know how it works. Did you know how it works? I know how I know how to roll a character. Well, no, I understand. I'm <laughs> Moving on, forty six. <laughs> remove the lowest. Yes. <laughs> God damn it. Um, 18 is what you want. Uh-huh. <laughs> All right, Richard, you can just leave now. Just... <laughs> Richard is subverting the norm instead of shitting on yeah. me. He's yeah. fucking with Zach, <laughs> yeah, and I love it. That's not what we brought you here for, Richard. <laughs> you are welcome back anytime. You signed the contract. <laughs> and you haven't even played Terraforming Mars. You're just a gross violation. <laughs> He's broken every rule. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. But anyway, uh, basically the game was create, you know, creating those stats. Yes. And so I did not really enjoy it that I much. did not like it either, and Paul also did not like it. Yeah. Which is weird to me because everyone loves this game, it seems like. For, and I just for know. me For me, it was because, you know, we created a character, but that's all it was. It was yeah. just create, And I was just like, I feel like I'm doing, getting, I'm creating somebody but I want to do something with that person. And so this expansion adds that, I think. It has... It's the idea. Yes. Yeah. Uh, there will be monsters, uh, 16 different minions to gain honor, experience, etc. Six different monsters after the party has completed their characters to fight against. And those uh, monsters will have different things like plus one combat die for every two experience you mm-hmm. have. And depending on your levels will be more difficult and things like that. Right. So I think this sounds interesting because they say like players will compete to construct the greatest fantasy character, which is what you do already. Gather information about the looming threat and prepare for a final showdown against a monster. So that's one of the things that I felt was really missing when I played it. Uh, aside from the fact that like dice drafting games aren't super, you know, in my wheelhouse, I felt like so much of what I was doing, I was just doing for no reason. Like I happened to end up buying a card at one point that made it to where if I tanked either strength or constitution, I got a bonus. It was like, oh, well, yeah, because it since it does not matter for anything down the road. Sure, I'll tank Constitution to get this bonus. Mm-hmm. Why not? 
Like the decisions didn't feel particularly meaningful. Whereas now I feel like if you know that, oh, there's something coming up that's going to weigh on you and you need a high constitution. Now that's an interesting decision. Do, is it worth it to tank it for those points? Yeah. Or do you keep it high so you can hopefully survive the fight? That sounds much more interesting to me. Yeah, I, I definitely don't feel like owning this right now, but I would play with the expansion to see uh, to see if it changes my opinion of the game enough. Yeah, so. yeah, a little a little pricey for ninety dollars. Yeah, I'm not going to spend ninety bucks on it though. Yeah. That's for damn sure. So hopefully somebody in our game group does. Yeah, right on. That's it for Kickstarters. That's it for Kickstarters. I got a question for y'all before we move on. Mm-hmm. Sure. What is y'all's success rate with Kickstarters? Because you always hear, like, the stories you always hear about Kickstarters are the ones where they screw every one of their backers. Uh, I've pretty much gotten everything I've backed. Most yeah. stuff cancels before they know that they're going to suck. Right. Um, it seems like uh, video game Kickstarters tend to have that. Have they're a, way worse. Yeah, the only way- one I've had fail was a video game Kickstarter, and it... I will never back another video game Kickstarter. Yeah, I've I've backed thirty Kickstarters, uh, out of which I've received about twenty of them so far. Uh, but that's just because the other ten are in process. One of them uh, arrived close to a year late, but otherwise, I've received them all, and I liked all but pretty much one of the ones that I played. So my success rate has been pretty high. As I am looking through my Kickstarters, uh, there are some like. Underworld Ascendant, which isn't out yet, but is still in constant development. Mm-hmm. Seven Days to Die was a Kickstarter. Oh. Yep. I fund I funded that. Mm-hmm. Apparently I don't know my fucking Kickstarter password. <laughs> <laughs> you, you should know that. Yeah, hang on one second. I it might help to try phone. to sound it out loud. Yeah. Do you remember R-O-O-P-T if you say it? P T four seven five two. Wait, shit. No. Zach edited it. No, it's fine. It it just appeared as a bunch of asterisks to us. <laughs> <laughs> That's how it works, right? Yep. Somebody changed the combination on my luggage. <laughs> some of them sucked. Yeah. Yeah, I've had some not great ones. But you still got the deliverable. Right. So. Yeah. Oh, scale. R- scale is probably the one that's the, the, the <laughs> Yeah. Scale was probably the one that the, I is still not out and I haven't heard much, but is still slightly in development. Oh, is that a video game one? It is. Alright, so I currently have one only one active pledge, like ongoing campaign. That's Card City XL that we talked about last week. That ends Wednesday. Mm-hmm. I have then backed oh man, I should not be looking at this. <laughs> one, two, three uh so uh, Brass, I backed, has not yet delivered. Solstice, backed, has not delivered. Tramways, backed, has not delivered. Lisboa, backed, has not delivered. Feudum, backed, has not delivered. Wordsy, backed, has not delivered. So I have six that are outstanding. Uh, I expect all of those to deliver. Druids, I got. Space Based Mutiny, I got. Mintworks, I got. Massive Darkness, I backed a buck and then bailed on the ultimate. Pledge Manager, yeah. Uh, nope, there's another one. Soul, I did not, I have not received. That's coming. So eight. I have eight outstanding. Yeah. Um, otherwise, I've gotten essentially everything. Uh, the only thing I haven't, like I said, was the only video game. Well, one of two video games I backed. I backed Project Eternity, which became Pillars of the Earth. Pillars of Eternity. Pillars of Eternity, uh, which was really good. And I enjoyed that. Uh, Rome was the game I backed, and that dude pieced out. There was apparently like him and another guy were the ones who ran it. They had a big falling out. They sued each other. The one guy never showed up in court. And that's that's $30 gone. Womp womp. One of two physical, like, non-gaming related, like, just physical products that I've backed. Mm -hmm. Uh, I backed two. One was a wallet that I still use that's pretty cool. The other one was a little CO2 cap for growlers. I remember that, yeah. That never worked. Uh, Like, you could put a new fresh CO2 canister and it'd work then. But if you set it in the fridge for a couple days, like, it must have had a slow leak somewhere in the system. Because then it'd just be gone. And it's like, well... It's an interesting idea. Fuck. Yeah, there's better implementations all over the place that didn't come. Yeah, you, know, you don't have, you didn't have to spend forty dollars through Kickstarter. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I've had really good success rate. But I'm also really picky about what I back. Yeah. I don't just back every random fucking thing. I think that's one nice thing about the board game ones versus like video games is because a lot of times the video games are like we need money so we can actually develop this game. For the uh, board games, it's we need money so that we can just print this game, produce this. Game. Yeah, because like, they it's are done. It's, it, ready. it's done. We just need to actually send it out and get you know, get it printed. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it's, you tend to have a better success rate with that. And also, you know, trying to choose ones that are from more well-known companies or they, they look like they have everything ready. It's not just like, Oh, we have these ideas of a game. So here's some art. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. 
Cool. All right. I think we're ready to move on to our review. So for this week's review, we are going to be comparing and contrasting Legendary Encounters Alien and Legendary Encounters Predator, uh, two deck building games from Upper Deck Entertainment. First up is Legendary Encounters Alien. It's a deck builder, like I said, from Upper Deck Entertainment, designed by Ben Sachowski and Daniel Mandel. Plays one to five players and takes about 45 minutes. Zach, got a rules rundown for us? Yeah. Uh, So in Legendary Encounters Alien, you're trying to survive and make it through one of four different scenarios based on the Alien movies. In this cooperative deck builder, you'll be purchasing cards to slowly build up your deck and killing enemies to make sure that they don't kill you first. They mostly come out at (laughs) net. Mostly. Yeah. (laughs) On your turn, you can recruit cards in the headquarters, or you can attack enemies in the combat zone or the complex. Now, enemies in the complex zone are hidden, so you, ha- you will have to be spending extra attack to be able to scan the rooms, allowing you to see what you're dealing with. Certain cards have a coordinate ability, allowing you to play the cards on other players' turns, helping them overcome bigger and bigger threats. Cards will also have one of five symbols on them, allowing for combos if you play them in a specific order. If you complete all three objectives in your scenario, you win, but if everybody dies, unsurprisingly, you lose. And that is Alien Deck Builder pretty standard fare at this point for our reviews what were your thoughts going into this game so zach you were the first one to bring this game to the group yeah uh i think i had i might have played dominion by the by now but i didn't play too many deck builders okay but i heard that there was going to be a game based from the alien franchise and i was like oh shit it's a good franchise yes i it's one of my favorite franchises easily the movie's still so... F- they hold up so fucking well. The first two, at least. Oh, yeah. yeah let's say, I'm like, Resurrection? Yeah. Really? Oh, yeah. Resurrection... But even Resurrection's not bad. I don't think. Like, it's cheesy. It's a it's bad a alien point. movie. It's yeah. not a bad sci-fi movie. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, but, yeah, the first three, Alien, mm-hmm. Aliens, and Alien 3, man, those are good. Yep. Uh, but, yeah, I was, I was just like, I need to get this, and I need to get this now. And I did. Cool. So, yeah. <laughs> you said those exact words. Yeah. Richard? Do you remember what you what your thoughts going the first time you played this game? Like, what were you kind of thinking about it? Well, what did um, you know about it? That well, kind of stuff? Uh, I knew it was a deck builder, and uh, uh, let's see, was that the one I helped you sleeve up, Zach, or was that Predator? That was Predator. That was Predator. Okay, um, but uh, going into it, you know, uh, I was definitely looking forward to playing it, and uh, I remember playing it and then being uh, brutally destroyed. Uh, so, like I said, a very long forty five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> right. But it is super fun, honestly. Like you know. Given how little that uh, how little I've actually won at that game, it's still surprisingly fun. Spoilers. <laughs> Jeff, what did you think going into the uh, game? So this game j- debuted at Gen Con. Uh, CJ and I were there. This is before I met you guys. Yep. You existed before you met us? I did. I um, don't believe it. I don't yeah. believe that at all. Yeah, yeah prove it. <laughs> I'm still not convinced you're not a figment of all of our collective imagination. God, what kind of imagination do you people have? Very not boring. very good ones, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just needed somebody else to to trick me into playing uh, player unknowns battlegrounds. That's what I did. Okay. All right, good. <laughs> um, uh, Alien has been. Uh, I, w- I was at Gen Con with a friend of the show, CJ. Did our music. Um, yes. He uh, loves aliens more than anything, I think. And we. Uh, saw the massive booth at Gen Con. This was before we were like doing research on shit that would be at Gen Con, and then we just saw this massive like legendary encounters alien, and we're like, holy fuck! <laughs> uh, and uh, we we needed to play that game. Uh, so I don't remember exactly. This was again like what Jeff was just saying. This was before I super paid attention to these kind of things. I ran a game night, you know. I was and at this point that like, and this is part of why Zach is on the show. Because Zach was always the guy who was, like, right there with what is the new game. Like, he was like, oh, yeah, this game just came out. <laughs> oh, I just got this game from Kickstarter. Yeah. Nobody has it yet. And so he'd been talking about how he was getting Legend of the Encounter. And I remember him bringing it the first time and, like, opening it there and seeing this massive fucking box full of cards that are sorted in the worst possible way. Yeah. <laughs> um, we'll and, get into that in components. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and we, uh, you know, we decided to sit down and play and i was excited like as i think pretty much everybody here alien is an awesome franchise that we're all big fans of and deck builders are super fun Mm -hmm. deck Mm -hmm. builders can be super fun (laughs) (laughs) maybe some of our favorite styles of games yeah (laughs) uh so i was very very eager to try this one uh going into it so now moving on to components as i just alluded to Mm -hmm. this is a big box 
full of a ton of cards. It's, it's over 600 cards. Mm-hmm. And they're not great quality cards. They're not that great. It's super uh, thin. When when we played it the first time, I think by the first or second game, I already noted some like smudges. Not really smudges, but like scratches or just dings on the cards. And I was like... I need to sleeve that, and so I. Yeah. I was saying, like, you didn't immediately sleeve it. Well, I didn't know. I had them, and I was like, I played one game, and I was like, okay, I need to spend like forty dollars to sleeve these games. Yeah. This game. Uh, they, they are unfortunately the background is pretty like it's not a solid black, but it's largely black, and even the faces have really dark edges. So, like shuffling them, any little nick or bump on the edge just shows white. Also, it ha- it just has so you know the first game in this series was Marvel Legendary. Mm-hmm. Uh, which is a different style of game than this, yes. but it still had that same back of just like it's blue and it has like this L on so it's it. Legendary, yeah. And I was just like, for Alien, this completely like pulls the theme out. So I got I got some nice ma- uh, matte black sleeves, and I was like, oh, this works really well. Yeah, yeah. I can't say I've actually seen the backs of those cards. <laughs> yeah, well, and it also comes with like forty blank cards because I'm I'm guessing the way they cut it and were packaged in it, they just had to have those. Yeah, but it was like. I remember the first time I got that, I was just like, what are all these for? Can I make my own cards? <laughs> Why not? Yeah, but yeah, it, it, they were sorted really badly because it was like four different piles and each pile was the exact same thing. So it's like, okay, I have to take one here, you know, take one from each one of those. That's one group, uh, and et cetera, et cetera. And especially there are a lot of cards that are similar, but they belong in different piles like face huggers. Some go in the strike deck, some go in the hatchery, some go into the the hives or the different scenarios. And you can only tell because of words at the very bottom that the first time you open it, you're not really looking for. Right. So I ended up spending an hour and a half sorting it the first time. And then realized you sorted it wrong. Yes. And I spent another 30 minutes to be like, okay, now let's fix this. Yeah. And then I spent an hour and 20 minutes another time sleeping the game. Yes. So uh, I recently had to go through that entire process because as I mentioned, I went home a uh, weekend prior to Geekway and I taught my mom and my brother this over Mother's Day weekend. And my copy at the time was in shrink unopened. And so I had to open it and sort all the cards and get everything ready right there. <laughs> like, uh, thankfully, I had played before. And so I knew what to look for to build the decks the right way. And I had two people where I could be like, all right, take this deck and see this little fine print at the bottom in very small italicies. That's what you're sorting by. Yep. So have fun. So it goes fast when you have multiple people working on it who know the right way to sort them. Yep. If you are just brand new to this game and opening it for the first time. who It's luck. not a game you're like, okay, guys, I bought this great game. Let's open it up and play. No. So no. <laughs> There's a solid 30 minutes of prep. And yeah. then you have to do the prep to play the game. There's 30 minutes of organizing the game, and then, oh, now we have to pick what we're going to play and set up for that. Um, There's a reason a lot of our copies were in shrink, and we only played with Zach's. Yes. (laughs) Yeah, Uh, once somebody does that for it, you don't don't want to do anything. It's all right. And so, uh, speaking of components, the art on it is very... Inconsistent. Hit or miss. When it hits, like on some of those strikes, it hits amazingly. Yes. And you're like, oh, God, that looks graphic. Because this is a graphic game because Mm -hmm. Aliens is a graphic graphic franchise. franchise. Like mature content wise. Yes, exactly. But some of the other pieces look, do not look good. They look bad. I mean, I don't know. (laughs) See, I I felt like none of them have stood out enough to me to where it's like, oh, oh, God. Well, it's like magic cards where there's like a couple dozen different artists yeah. that do yeah. art for different cards and that's kind of what this game feels like a lot of times yeah if, if they were more consistent in their art style if they were all that sort of weirdish art or they're all the good art it'd be like okay it's better but it's like you have some really good and then you have some that's not some yeah. more realistic yeah looking art and then some that's more like comic book right. kind of looking art. yeah now granted like i said none of them stood out to me as particularly bad this is a known blind spot for me when it comes to card games I've had no problem ever with Terraforming Mars' yeah. art, second mention. Um, <laughs> you know, like, people complain about the fact that it's, like, you know, some digital art and some real time. It's like, clip art. art and clip art. And that, that I've for, never noticed. That, it's never bothered I've me. I've noticed it, but that it didn't bother me. Because yeah. I'm just... So. Uh, the, the art is very large on each of these cards. and is much more prominent um, to be bothered by. Yeah. Uh, the play mat. Uh, oh, that looks pretty solid. Nice. Um, on my... This first time I'll mention this complaint. I don't like the art very much, and I don't like the art that they use on the playmats. Really? I can see I can see that part. Uh, I would rather there just be blank space on the playmats. I did not like the blank. Well, I remember you showed me that because you actually got a blank one. Yeah, when I, we, for when, Predator, yeah. I got a blank. 
play mat. I'm not a big fan of it. I'm right there with you, Adrian. Uh, like, I kind of have a blind spot for the art. I mean, like, it's nothing that I've noticed consciously at any rate, because I'm usually just too busy trying to stay alive. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, and it's, uh, and I, and I just happen to be like hyper aware of it because when we were playing Gallerist. It's like the first thing I noticed was like as soon as the, he, he handed me this, I go, "What the fuck's up with these meeples?" <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, "What are you talking about?" I'm like, "They look super shitty and are really fucked up." And he's just like, "Oh, okay." Like yeah. he didn't, it didn't even register to him. Whereas, like as soon as I see something that throws it, you know, throws something off my eye, I'm I all focus about, on it. I, I definitely pri- prioritize function well over form. Yes. Um, going back to the playmat things, so I don't have a problem with the the artwork. In and of itself, my only problem with artwork on the player mat that comes in the box is it's specific to aliens. Mm -hmm. So, like, the combat zone is, like, the the combat rover that they have in that. And a lot of the other cards and stuff, the art seems to be based mostly off of aliens. (coughs) Not all of it. Yeah, I mean, I would say, like, the dead characters is from Alien 3. The hazard events is definitely from Alien uh, with the purge on the helmet and stuff like that. But... Like, uh, yeah, it's like a mishmash, and so that's part of the problem. Is it doesn't stand up, and like, like most of the art complaints we have, it's just because it's inconsistent. Yeah, and then also that some of the words, like the complex, is written where the cards go. So once you yeah. cover that up, like I remember we were halfway through our first game, and it was just like, if stuff's in the complex, and we're like, what's where's, the complex? Where's the complex? Yeah, I had similar problem with uh, legendary. Big Trouble in Little China, where, like, they had, like, four different areas. Like, that one had even more areas, and it was like, wait, what is technically which yeah. area? Like, that's, that, that tax is what we call memory workload. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. the, uh, like, where, like, the different uh, power station, weapons locker, med lab, etc. would be, what were actually, like, where you would play the cards, and... Yeah. Yeah. But this does not have that problem, for the most part. But, yeah, I mean, otherwise, it's a... It's, a bunch of cards. There's not yeah. really much to the components. A the mat of... itself is good quality. It's nice yeah. foam. It's pretty yeah. well. It holds it's like, up. It's like a mouse mat. Mm-hmm. Um, Card quality is below average. Right. Yeah. So on to rules and rules explanation. Zach, you taught this game. I've taught it many times. Yes. <laughs> How do you feel? Because you were also the first to learn it. So yeah, you're probably one of the few who's really dove into the rule book. Um, the rule book's not the best, but. I feel that it's easy enough to teach, especially if like especially if someone's played a deck builder before. So there's you know there's really two types of deck builders. There is the Dominion style, where it's just you know the bunch of different piles, and that's all you can buy from. Or, or the better Arctic Scavengers. Yeah, um, that is yeah. <laughs> no, 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 I haven't played it so. Yeah. Or the I, I just say Ascension style because that's the first one I played with okay. it, where it's the basically a trench. You have like five or six cards you can buy, and those just randomly come out. And so this is this is one of those. I feel like these are a little easier for newer people because when you're buying cards, you can just be like, all right, out of all these cards, these this is the best one you can get. So that's that's nice, at least. And I think the only problems with this is that it's... And this one isn't a problem, but it's six cards instead of five cards, which <laughs> a lot of people with deck builders, it's five cards. And so I, I keep having to remind people, it's like, oh, it's six cards, by the way, not five. If it was five, we would just die uh, that yeah, much yeah, sooner. Yeah, you'd be, <laughs> you'd be super fucked. <laughs> yeah. uh, and, and random aside, uh, this... Uh, demo picture i'm looking at has five cards in there really no, yeah. so it's five cards in the area you can buy from yeah hand, hand size hand size, hand size. Yeah. Okay. talking about two different things yeah yep the symbols on the cards they're they can it, i can i can understand people not catching them it was the hardest thing to teach they're yeah. pretty obscure to my my mom and my brother mm-hmm. was how to chain the symbols yeah and like yes because the cards are you play them in the you know you play them in a specific order so if it says you know if you play one tech and it's really not like luckily they on there they if you play one of these symbols before you play this card you get to do this extra thing mm-hmm. but, but they don't say it like that they show the the symbol yeah like they exactly show the tech symbol yeah and it, with an action and, and, it, and it sucks because some cards can have that tech symbol and still be tech and you're like does this count towards it and you're like no it doesn't really sorry mm-hmm. it has to be before that card because there's a lot of ones where it's just like if you played it this turn you get extra things but this one mm-hmm. it's the specific order that you play it it's definitely taxing to the cognitive workload. Yeah, definitely. Uh, and then also, each of the different scenarios have their own unique keywords. Uh, like, because Aliens has Vigilant, which, which is you can play a card out and it can stay out until you use it. Yeah. Um, 
Like body armor. Yeah, exactly. And so every time you're playing a new scenario, it's like, okay, well, let's see what new things are here. Right. Uh, but luckily, like once you've played all of them, it's it's pretty easy to figure out what they mean. Right. But that, that's a lot of card-based games where they have a whole bunch of keywords and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, you're learning all that new each time. Yeah, discarding versus kill, et cetera, et cetera. You Exile. Know. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, that I would say that's like the only really complicated part. Otherwise, it's... It's a pretty standard the, one to learn. The most complicated thing I think a new player would have with uh-huh. this, where no one had learned before, is setting up each of the scenarios. Oh, yes. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. That that would definitely true. Yeah. Yeah. With no one ever having learned. Yeah. That was rough for me, like, when I taught it a couple weeks ago. Like, I've seen it set up enough that I had a pretty good idea. And when I but, organized it, I knew enough about how to organize that I organized them basically to where I could just pull out one deck yeah. and separate it into the multiple piles it needed to be. But... Yeah, if you're not very familiar with this game, that's oh true. I, I'm the one that always sets it up in art because I'm like, okay, I know you know these three here, then two here. There, take these four characters, shuffle them together, put them over here. We need the sergeant's place. And that. Yeah, I, I can understand not knowing that it can be a little bit yeah. daunting. Yeah, yeah. If Zach doesn't play it at game night, no one plays it. <laughs> right. Yeah. So I felt that for for my most recent play, the teach went pretty well. You know, I taught it to two essentially non-gamers. My brother plays some games. Mm-hmm. My mom plays very few games. Monopoly. <laughs> they neither one play Monopoly. Boo. <laughs> um, and overall, like, like the main area that we had to keep addressing and that kept coming up was, like I was talking about, the, the symbols and matching those. Otherwise, the core concepts they got, like, it was pretty... It, Took a couple turns, and like I said, these are for complete non-gamers. It took a couple turns to get them used to, like, this symbol is a coin, this symbol is a strike. Yeah. And you need, like, a certain amount of strikes to do damage, and that's a new gamer issue. You're not going to have that problem if you've played other deck builders and you're familiar with, like, this is a buy, yeah. this one's an attack, or this one's whatever other action that mm-hmm. you get to do. Um, especially if you're familiar with anything else in the Legendary series, whether it's an encounters game or regular legendary, they use very similar layouts and iconography on their cards. Right. That should make that pretty easy. But yeah, I think that pretty well covers rules Definitely, and rules yeah. explanation. So gameplay. This is where it really gets interesting. I this this is definitely one of my favorite games to play. My as soon as I saw that all of the enemies come out face down and you can see them slowly creep up and you're like, I have no idea if this is gonna be a good card or a bad card when you're when you're scanning it. I, I love that tension that it brings because they're they're like if someone has, you know, eggs, like if you like in the first mission, it's like if there are eggs out every time you reveal one, you're like, please don't be an event because I don't want to deal with a face hugger right now. Please don't be Oh, thank God it's that. <laughs> yeah. It, it fits the theme yes, so it does. well. Yeah, very much the, so. It's just like it's like the scene from Aliens where They've get, they're coming in on the scanners, and they no one can see them. Yeah. yeah. Ticking. They, where are they? Where are they? Where are they? Yeah. They're, they're right on top of us, man. Yeah. They're right we on should, top of us. We should just have that motion tracker sound going on in the background yeah. off of a speaker at all mm-hmm. times. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, but yeah, this game is... For the most part, really hard. Viciously like, hard. There are there are times where it's just like, oh, that, like you get lucky with the type of cards that come out. And you're like, oh, that actually wasn't too bad. But it is... That is the exception, not yes, the rule. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Um, my one annoyance is the, the, the headquarters, which is, you know, the trench where you buy the cards. If a bunch of them are super expensive right at the beginning. You're, you're hosed. Yeah. And they so you need a clear option. I, I think it'd be just like if you don't want to buy anything, you can then you can choose to clear off everything. But then you lose whatever is there. I think I'm, I, I might house rule that just because there are a couple times like the last game that we mm-hmm. played was just like everything is expensive. Seven, six, five, yeah. five, two. I and think then, it should be like a, a table vote. No, that's what I mean. Yeah. Well, yeah. Like, if everybody's like, all right, yeah, this is garbage, let's wipe it. Yeah. I don't know. I feel like maybe, like, leave it, add a chance element to it. To whether add, or not add, it wipes. Add a to- hi- add, maybe add a hive care, you know, onto the complex to then wipe. Because then it'd just be like, oh, nothing good right now. Like, not even the, nothing you buy. But it's like, oh, there's nothing good that we really want. All right. Let's just wipe it. Wipe so. it. Anyway, but that's all. But at the same time, <laughs> uh-huh. that's where sergeants come in. Like, uh-huh. so it's shitty. Yeah. So everybody buy a bunch of sergeants and then pitch in to let somebody buy a seven card exactly. early yes and now they've got a really powerful card in a small deck and they can just wreck the coordinate ability is another one of my favorite abilities yes yeah. i know that's not in legendary because that's a, a semi-cooperative or cooperative but there's a one a single winner right uh and i love the ability that or the ability that you can play a card that helps somebody else but then you get to draw another card from your deck so, so it doesn't hurt it doesn't necessarily hurt yourself yeah um i really like that 
uh, the sergeants are always just a money. They're mm-hmm. just a two money that you can send to somebody else. But I like some of the other cards that come up that do more interesting things where you can coordinate damage or you can coordinate different like Scan- doing kind of free things. scanning yeah. or there's one where you can get three money if you play it for yourself. But if you play for somebody else, they get three damage. Yep. And so and it's always funny because like sometimes I'll see people have coordinates in their hand when they're playing their hand. And I'm like. What are you doing? Coordinates <laughs> are for other people's turns. <laughs> yeah, you should use those. Because, again, they're not... I think they're okay for yourself. A little yeah. bit of money, a little bit of damage. Mm-hmm. But if you can play them on somebody else's turn to boost them, and then you still get to draw cards, so you're not necessarily losing out. And your best cards aren't going to be your coordinates. They're not going to mm-hmm. be your sergeants and stuff. You want to play those so you can draw a new card and move through your deck. Mm-hmm. Because this game doesn't have a call. There's a couple times, but it is very rare. Mm-hmm. Yeah. In this instance, it doesn't bother me just because I like, I think it fits the theme of, okay, we need, you know, we just need to kill these aliens. And then it's, oh God, I just got basic cards again. I'm fucked. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so so you, you, it's a game where you you got to move the deck. Mm-hmm. You got to. And so anything that helps you do that is, is yes, a positive. Exactly. Like a card that makes everyone discard a card isn't always bad because mm-hmm. everybody gets to be like, oh, good. I didn't want this shitty card. Yeah. Like I needed one more damage here. I'll discard a money mm-hmm. and hope to draw a new damage. Yeah. Oh, I needed money. I'll discard a damage mm-hmm. and draw. hope to draw yeah. money. I also really like that each of the scenarios feel really different. Yes. They play very different. And they play similar to the movies. They yes. feel alien. The alien uh, scenario feels much more like a creeping dread that there's something really bad coming. Yeah. yeah. And it's never quite there. Uh, whereas the aliens is like, it's constant murder of like mid-level aliens that are out to hurt you. Yeah, definitely. And they all have acid blood. Yes. And those ones are the worst. They are the yeah. worst, especially if you just don't get enough damage to kill them. And then, then they fill it up, yep. and then you're just like, we're going to die. Mm. And I, I like that the strikes, they can go from anywhere from zero damage, close call, to a, there's a five in there. There's only one five in there, but every time you flip it, you're just like, I have four <laughs> health left. Please, God, don't. Oh, no, it's the five damage one. <laughs> oh, and yeah, I'm dead. I'm dead. I like that the main deck of like cards you can buy, uh, it's split into four characters for each scenario. Mm-hmm. And basically, like there's a lot of doubles. Uh, duplicates for yes. each character except for like each character has one like super one yep like there's a ripley one in aliens it's the power loader mm-hmm. and it just wrecks aliens yep. or there's like the bishop one that's a vigilant where it's like him getting ripped in half but mm-hmm. it like lets you give somebody else a massive bonus yep. once per game uh in in the first alien chief parker chief engineer parker has uh basically it is helping you know helping ripley with Ash, you know, pulling him off Ash, hitting him in the head. And so it's like four damage unless you're fighting Ash, in which case it's eight damage, which is enough to just kill him straight off. Yeah. Which is great because his card is unless somebody coordinates damage to you, you can't kill this guy mm. because you, you need somebody else to help you on that. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. And so it all fits very thematically with the actual storylines of those games. Yes. Like in the, in the, you know, we were talking about the uh, resurrection, not the best of the movies, <laughs> but in the game, one of the scenarios, you start adding flooded tiles to mm-hmm. certain rooms, which there's a whole scene in that movie where they're going through the flooded rooms and fighting aliens that are swimming all crazy yep. fast. So they all fit very well. I like the gameplay in this a lot. Oh, yeah. Uh, I think being fully co-op is a huge benefit. I played some of the other encounter or legendary. The legendary games that are the semi-co-ops, mm-hmm. and I don't care for them. Yeah. But full co-op, that's the way to go. Yeah. There's a there's a way you can become an alien. Oh yeah, so that, that this has a bunch of different variants that you can do. You can technically have traders where somebody's working for the company. Okay. Uh, where you just want to be the last person alive. <laughs> All right. Uh, and then you can also become an alien because if you get a face hugger, if you get a face hugger on you and you don't kill it by the end of the next person's turn, mm-hmm. then you get a chest burster. And now aliens won't attack you. They're like, well, you know. You got one of us in there, so you cool, yeah. buddy. Um, you cool. Yeah, and it goes into your deck, and then if at any point you draw that card from your deck, you're dead. But it did offer you the ability to be like, you can actually become an alien and play it. And we've done it a couple times, and they are super overpowered. Yeah. <laughs> like, they get, like, one of the cards, is, like, every card that they can play is pretty powerful, and they can play six cards a turn. And it's like you play play this on an alien, and the first time that alien would die, remove this instead, so, <laughs> or give somebody a face hugger. Or, <laughs> oh, God. I've tried to not really play it, play with it that much, 
or because just six cards by itself is just too powerful, and losing one person in that game just sucks enough as it is. Yeah, it's uh, incredibly brutal. Yes, and technically you can make your own scenario by switching different characters, different locations, but... I would rather just play the movies than make my own thing. So Yeah, especially because, like you said, each movie has its own symbol that mm-hmm. ties together all their cards. So if you start mishmashing, then you're going to have issues with cards not working yeah, well you're together. You're going to have and, a bad time. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So now, play the movies. Yeah, There's enough variance in the way those decks play that even playing the same movie mm-hmm. multiple times in a row, it plays different enough yeah. to be okay. Um, and it's hard enough that you're, like, you're not just constantly beating it. Yeah. Right. Yeah, so that's Legendary Alien. Moving on to Legendary Predator. This is going to sound very familiar. Mm -hmm. Uh, This is a (laughs) deck-building game published by Upper Deck Entertainment in 2015. Ooh. Ooh. Mm. Uh, It was designed by Ben Sachowski. Daniel Mandel plays one to five players, 45 minutes. Zach, do you have a rules explanation for us? Uh, In Legendary (laughs) Encounter Predator, it's basically the same as Alien. Uh, It does, however, add a mode where you can go through the first two Predator movies As the Predators. This mode is competitive, uh, with everybody competing for the most honor. Uh, Enemies will appear face up, because Predators have no need for scanning. (laughs) Uh, You'll also be able to duel other Predators, making them take extra damage. And then after the scenario ends, whoever has the most honor wins. But otherwise, it works just the same as Legendary Encounters. Right on. Alien. Yes. So, components. Same thing. It's a big box of cards. Yep, it's the... Same components is the same problem. Rules are the same. It's, it's, yep. The rules the same. It's just gameplay is the only real yep. difference. So we're gonna skip past all of yep. that stuff. Uh, <laughs> same so, crappy card. Same yep. inconsistent art. Yeah. So yeah. much that I bought a player mat that doesn't have art on it. <laughs> right. Uh, so gameplay. So the main difference I've noticed is the first card, like the the when you pick a role in in Alien and Predator, you also get a card that's specific to you. In the first one, in Alien, it was just, when you play this card, you get to do this ability. Now, this one, it has one that has, it's called Call for Backup, which basically means when you play this card, every time someone does coordinate with you, you get to do that ability. So if three people coordinate with you, you get to do it three times. But if someone plays zero, no one plays any coordinates, you just, you don't get to do that ability. Okay. You get, you still get the money or whatever it is, but the actual ability, so it, it, it feels, that feels a lot more inconsistent as well. Because you're just like, sometimes it's amazing, sometimes you're just getting money. Okay. And so it makes coordinating that much more important in this game because so many of the cards rely on... Well, not like all of our best cards rely on that. Gotcha. For uh, our own ones, at least. Uh, so I have not played Predator. Okay. Uh, we only bought four copies at Gen Con when it came out. Yeah, it's still sitting in shrink on my mm-hmm. cabinet. It's one of the handful of games that I own that have not played. Two, actually. Jeff, have you played? Absolutely. What do you think of gameplay? Um, it is very similar to Aliens. <laughs> um, pretty much the same mechanics. Um, you can't get a face hugger. No. Uh, you can't turn into a predator. Nope. Uh, unless you play with the... Uh, I, you can play the game as uh, the movies, but Predator 1 and 2, or you can play as Predator 1 and 2 as the Predators. Yeah. Which is probably very interesting. It's... Yeah, I... <laughs> I still haven't played that, unfortunately. Yeah. But that's because I just like the cooperative aspect yeah. of the Legend Encounter so much. And also, it took us five times to beat the first movie. And, so- <laughs> <laughs> and I'm wrong because I have played because I do remember the mad rush. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I, we, no, yeah, you have absolutely played. When we bought it at Gen at Con. At Gen Con, we yeah. immediately played Ant's copy because Ant ditched Jeff and I to jump on the chopper at the end of the first one <laughs> as Jeff and I died fighting the Predator. No, no, no. We got to the chopper. He wanted to stay to behind and kill the predator. That's that's right. Yeah, we were like, he get to the chopper. If we all get to the chopper, we win. Well, and you, then he's you, like, all you, right, you two can win. I'm gonna stay and fight. Yeah, because <laughs> this this one offers, like like you said, you can technically be escape. But the, if the full win is you kill them, you kill the predator, and then you escape. But you can just be like, fuck this. This is because he is a yes. bitch to kill. <laughs> Real hard. Uh, I want to say that's in his name. Yes. A big mother. Mm -hmm. But I also know that some of the strikes here are worse because there's one that's if that person who had that strike dies. It kills everyone. Everybody dies. (laughs) We've had that happen to us before. How many times have you had that, Richard? (laughs) I, you know, I, uh, more times than I care to admit. (laughs) (laughs) Because usually how the game would end was the person that had that strike would die first. And we're like, well, all right, well, that's game over. Game over. (laughs) 
how many times have we won Predator? I've won we, it once. Jeff, once. you and I technically won because yes. Ant stayed behind and died. Uh, that's the only time I have ever won Predator. <laughs> we have killed the, the Bad Mother and escaped once. Every other time, big explosion and we died. Define yeah. win. <laughs> yeah. You didn't die. Okay. My, like, as a collective team, the team won. But I have personally never been alive to see it. He... <laughs> For whatever reason, he tends to be the first person that dies. I'm just like a big bullet magnet, like yeah. like freaking like uh, what's his name, Brett from Archer. Yeah, <laughs> he died doing what he loved, getting, getting shot. shot. <laughs> Spoiler alert. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so yeah, gameplay overall is is very similar. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, the, brutally the, difficult. There's the events uh, that you have like in Alien uh, that can be like traps and things like that. Yes, because uh, there is the objective. Um, and the gear and things like that. Yeah, for when you're playing as the Predator. It mm-hmm. once again does the same thing that Alien did where the the toughness of the game and the way it plays out, again, feels like, like you're playing through the Predator mm-hmm. movie. Like, people are dying and you don't know yep. what's happening and shit's ridiculous. You feel like you're in the movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah that, that first, the first Predator, it had, the first objective is you just have to clear out this village mm-hmm. and... That one is Rebel really compound. Yeah, wh- it really depends on what order that you get those in. Because if you get that, su- like the last card of phase one, mm-hmm. it's you're gonna fight all the bad guys, like all of the rebel warriors. And it's like for every rebel warrior you defeated, move it, you know, farther to the right, and it becomes super hard to clear that s- to scan and clear that area to be able to burn it. Mm-hmm. And so, like we were, I remember one time we were playing, we were still ha- we were almost to part three and we still hadn't done the first one because we just couldn't get enough to do it ouch the time we won was we got that super early and we were able to clear it out i think the very first game we played was uh we got it out uh, we cleared it easily early. And yeah early uh and that's that is one of the things um that is tricky about these games is sometimes mm-hmm. it's a random card shuffle like you you when you build that deck mm-hmm. you build the three stages and you shuffle them to and then you put stage one on top of stage two on top of stage three. So it gets progressively harder, but there's still enough randomness just in how those stages, mm-hmm. what cards come out and when, that you can get hosed. Yep. If the card you really need is the last card of that stage, then that's going to suck. Mm-hmm. But for me, at least, that's just part of the the hardness of this game. The difficulty yeah. is just being able to r- wrangle all that in. So Right on. Yeah. Now that we've kind of talked about both of them... Mm-hmm. Uh, just sub in everything we said for Alien in a lot of those sections. Yes. <laughs> yeah. uh, we didn't want to make this episode twice as long. Yeah. They are very similar games. They are very similar games, which comes to the crux of this matter, comparing the two of them. Do you need to own both? Is one better than the other? Mm-hmm. Where yeah. Well, I think Alien is better than Predator. I would agree with that. Uh, I like Predator's phase one, two, three. Because it's sort of, yeah, it... it it goes like four, five, and then six versus just five, five, five for the yeah. like the drones and stuff like that. Yes, there's some cooler like semi co-op co-op rules because I I guess it's a little thinner game in Predator because you only have the two scenarios, mm-hmm. but then you can play as the Predator for those uh, other ones. Uh, Alien has a lot more full game in there because mm-hmm. with the four different scenarios, but like mechanics of the game, they're pretty much the same but one's alien and one's predator yeah and then also you can get a crossover kit that costs like 10 bucks that Mm -hmm. allows you to take the characters from uh alien and play against the predator you can also become a predator and fight against the aliens yeah and And alien versus predator exactly yeah you can do a full-on alien versus predator yep (laughs) which none of us have done right no okay it's, we, it's on we, the list of wants. Yes, I have. We have that. We have. I think it's just one of those things where it's like, we'd have to learn new things or I could just play Alien again. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just yeah. okay with that. Uh, Richard, what do you think? Uh, you've played both of them. Where do you fall on the scale? I have played both of them. Uh, I've played Predator more than I've played the Alien. So I'm a little biased towards Predator. Uh, personally, the, the, the call for backup mechanic, I think definitely requires way more planning, which I actually kind of enjoy because there's, uh, it, it, increase, it further, further increases the co-op-ness, for lack of a better word, of the game. So Cool. Uh, I think that ultimately for me, it's going to come down to two questions that you need to ask yourself. Uh, do you, would you prefer full, co- full co-op no matter what? Well, not no matter what. Would you, do you prefer full co-op most of the time? 
Or would you like the ability to be competitive? If you would prefer more full co-op, go Alien. If you want more of an option to be competitive, go Predator. The second question, which theme appeals to you yes, more? Yeah, wh- which movies do you like better? <laughs> uh, which for me is Alien. I, as yeah. much as I love both Predator movies, and for that matter, I like most of the Alien vs. Predator. Mm-hmm. And really all three. There's been three Predator movies now. Because there's Predators yeah. with Alien Predators, and Brody. plural. Mm-hmm. Uh, which I actually really liked. And I then don't the forget Alien vs. Predator and Alien vs. Predator Requiem. Requiem. Yeah. So, so, and I'd rather. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. The, the, the two AVPs I could kind of let go. The three Predator movies, I liked all three of them. Really? Uh, you like the third one? I liked, I in some ways liked Predators more than Predator 2. Okay, fair enough. Uh, Predator is the yeah. best of oh, the yeah. entire series. Mm-hmm. And I have to say, Predator, the alien, uh, the Predator game has my favorite quotes in this mo- from both movies, <laughs> including the yes. sexual, or I wish it said a goddamn sexual Tyrannosaurus. Sexual Tyrannosaurus. Sexual tyrannosaurus. Uh, well, that's just because, I mean, I mean you, it's can't, you can't have a movie with uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger, mm-hmm. Jesse Ventura, yep. and... Carl Weathers. Carl Weathers. <laughs> yeah. And not have just an obscene amount of fantastic quotes the, and one-liners. The one best liners. handshake ever. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> they are very glistening, vascular men. There's, there is a... Uh, a sweet video that has a combination of the movie 2012 uh-huh. and that handshake from Predator. <laughs> like in between their handshake, the movie of 2012 happens. <laughs> and it's all just the disasters of 2012 happening. Nice. Yeah, it's pretty good. Very vascular men. <laughs> yep. Um, so, yeah, so I agree that the one liner quotability is way better in Predator. Uh, aliens, you get some of the game over, man. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Game over, man. Uh, which is also pretty fantastic. But ultimately, I, I prefer the Alien series far more than the Predator series, and so I fall on the side of Alien. Yeah. Well, if, we're, if that's how we're gauging the games, I mean, you know. Well, I mean, and, and gameplay, like, everything for me, like, I, I prefer the full co-op of Alien. I like that there's the full four scenarios versus the two. It, they're vi- they are strikingly similar. I don't think you're going to hate one and love the other yes, yeah it's going to be like i love the one and i really like the other or it's gonna be i hate the both mm-hmm. like you're, you're they're gonna be very similar yeah. and so like i said it comes down to whether you want more of a co-op or whether you want the option for the predator yeah. versus people competitive and then the other side of that is which franchise yeah. is your your jam um i think that i could own or i do own both and i'm happy that I own both. I think like if you're going to get one, get Legendary Encounters Alien, but then if you like that one, then get Predator because it's more. More yeah. of it. And then you can do the AVP scenario. Exactly. Right. Uh, I am down to only owning one of them. Uh-huh. I only own Predator right now. It's still in Shrink. I have not opened it. It's because you gave it to your because brother. Because I gave it to my brother because <laughs> he enjoyed it so much and I can acquire it easily and it's got like seven copies in my game group. Yes. So I didn't feel... You're it, okay, not over. I was okay, and giving it you know to my brother's a gift. It's not like I got rid of it because I didn't like it. I gave it to somebody who would play it more and didn't have a ready copy. You just dumped the box out in front of him. <laughs> Here you go. <laughs> have fun, little brother. <laughs> I, I'm same with Zach. If I was going to give advice, I would say get Alien, play that. If you like that, look into picking up Predator mm-hmm. to add more to your game. And then also, if you hate yourself, get the Alien expansion, because that just makes it harder. So, <laughs> And there's a whole player that plays as just the Alien Queen. Yeah, you can play just as the Alien Queen, so 1v all. I know you like that. <laughs> <laughs> Overall, I think they're fantastic games. Yes. I love deck builders, and uh, a thematic deck builder like this is pretty rare outside of the legendary encounters. Uh, and I love co-op, I love mm-hmm. deck builders, I love yeah. thematic yeah, these are my favorite deck builders. Yep. The Encounter series, going Alien, Predator, and then I, the heard, only other one I've played, Legendary. Inca- or, uh, the Big, Big Trouble in Little China. Which is just Legendary. Le- just Legendary, yes. uh, And then there is Legendary Encounters Firefly, but I have heard the art on that is horrible. Really bad. Like, not not inconsistent, just consistently <laughs> bad. Consistently <laughs> bad. Yeah. I haven't uh, played that one, but... Yeah. yeah. See, and I, I forget that Big Trouble is just a legendary game, not a legendary encounter. Which you didn't know, Jeff, that that was a I, thing. I right? wished it was a legendary encounter, well, but you can't really, it, I guess. Well, no, I'm saying when you bought it, you're like, oh, it's like. it's like I never played a legendary game. Right, that's what I'm saying, yeah. Except legendary encounters. And, and I haven't played it since we played it at Gen Con, but I remember Big Trouble, the, the 
semi co op. We played it mostly co op. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah, totally... somebody was technically the winner at the end, but it didn't matter. I know people that just play it and then they win. Yeah, we won. But yeah. then, yeah, I think those games are a little easier than encounters. Yeah, so. shorter, yeah. less yeah. thematic, for sure. Yeah, more random. Mm-hmm. So, Richard, your guest. Do you have any any thoughts to chime in here at the end on one over the other? No. Nope. Any, anything else? To add? <laughs> <laughs> no. All right. You don't own either of these, right? I do. I do not own okay. either of these. I play them vicariously through Zach. I think, uh, as do we all. <laughs> I think Nick might have bought a copy. Yes, it was massively on sale. Yeah. I think he I picked mean, it so up. I mean, that's three copy. games that he will own now. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, yeah, cost and availability. They're both widely available for about forty-four, forty-five dollars um, on all the major board game websites. You shouldn't have any trouble finding either one of them. Uh, so, really, whichever one. Sounded better to you. Yeah. Go or both. It. Or both. Yeah. Why not? Go big. Or both. And then you'll have Alien vs. Predator. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so then you can organize both of those nightmares. I had, <laughs> I had, before the expansion came out, I had Alien and Predator in one box. That box weighed like 15 pounds. It was ridiculous. Very heavy. And then I saw, hey guys, we're having an expansion for Alien. And I was like, god damn it. And Does so, it all fit? So now I have, and also because I did that, I had one box. I had the box lid from Predator, and then the bottom box bottom from Alien. I got rid of the other ones because, like, ah, oh, this is cool. Alien, it's Alien and Predator. Predator. And so now I have Alien in the expansion in the Predator box, and then I have Predator in my Alien expansion box. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. That's a fighting, lot of exactly. cards. Yeah, <laughs> like twelve hundred plus cards. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So really briefly. I have not played the Alien expansion. But Zach, you own it? Have yes. you played it? Uh, I've played one scenario on it, and it involved flying xenomorphs, <laughs> which is like, oh, God. Just double, basically. Yeah. It, and it also included a uh, xenomorph Hulk that took up two spots in the complex when it was revealed. Uh, it, they just decided to add more things that were... Uh, Let's make this game yeah, harder. Yeah, they're interesting. They added more characters, so you could technically be like, the guy that immediately got chest bursted an alien, whatever his name was. Mm. Um, they added him. I'm like... John Hurt. Yes, it's, it <laughs> yes. is John Hurt. <laughs> yeah. But I'm like, what's the point of adding that? Because technically, by the time you encounter an alien, he's already dead, yeah. but whatever. <laughs> uh, but they added more, so they added you know, more ver- uh, variability and stuff like that. Cool. Uh, a lot more characters to play as as well. And then, like he said, Alien Queen. Yeah, so that sums everything up, I think. We're yeah. Ready to finish it up. Mm-hmm. They're all good um, games. Yes. Buy them are. all. They are all good games. Zach, we had some comments on our BGG thread we for do. this episode. All right. Patrick says, looking forward to the discussion. I enjoyed both. My buddy has the Alien version, which we played a few times. I found it very thematic and enjoyable. I picked up the Predator version since I like those movies, too. I have only played it solo. I don't play either much due to the enormous setup time, even though they are fun and feel like the theme well. Uh, and feel... Like the theme well. Like the theme they, well. Yeah. Yeah. They do. Uh, any game that lets me say, do it, and get to the chopper. Do my it. Do it now. Yeah. <laughs> we agree with that. We agree. Yes. <laughs> yes. The long setup time is a barrier to entry. Yep. Uh, yeah, anytime that. we finish, I'm like, okay, guys, you go do other things. I'm going to spend 15 minutes to get everything organized yeah. again. <laughs> and one of the best things about Predator is getting to yell cheesy Arnold yes, quotes. Yes, exactly. Uh, then Bob says, I never played Predator, but I have played most of the Alien decks. Thanks, Zach. Uh just a regular, like a smiley face, but like with the carrot things on it. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. I, it's like eyebrows. Yes, exactly. So a blind person is smiling with eyebrows. <laughs> <laughs> Continue. Uh-huh. Like in most deck builders, it is enjoyable to build up your engine and hope it shakes out right. And I feel Alien handles this well, adding a level of stress you'd expect from the franchise. Definitely agree on that. I also like that some villain cards that are the gotchas, the facehuggers, and quirks, like Jonas the cat, or Jones the cat, this helps Which is actually up, Jonesy. Jonesy, yeah. This helps break up the rhythm, I feel, is all too common deck builders. Yeah, because every scenario has a good card for you to get, but if it makes it... To the combat zone, yeah, you it makes kill it. Yeah, and I, yeah, I always love that it's just like, oh no, it's a cat accidentally, and you shoot it. But then it's also Newt is the one in Alien, so it's like, you accidentally shot this little girl. because well, you- <laughs> In all of the movies, there's a time when one of those characters popped up and almost got wasted, yep. but didn't. Yeah. And like, so I like that the game has like, you can almost waste it and get it. Yeah. Or well, you actually did waste it. Yeah. And that sucks. I do wonder how this plays if you stack the purchase deck, much like you stack the villain's deck. Could the deck game work well if cheaper buys rolled out early, or would there be uh, so redundant by, that the better buys would be trapped in the ends? That'd be my concern with stacking it, 
is that you would end up not getting those high tier yeah. cards. I I feel like I mean if you really overthought it, you could probably come up with a good way to stack the yeah. deck to where it ramped appropriately or you know thin the deck mm-hmm. maybe a little bit to where you take some out. Yeah. Um so that it ramps according to the game, but then I think you start to lose some of like the variability. Like I like the idea that you can have a bunch of high level cards out there. Mm-hmm. You all take a bunch of sergeants, coordinate and get somebody a high level card early. Yep. You know, I think that's kind of an interesting idea that yeah. kind of self balances mm-hmm. usually not always yeah i don't know i'd be willing to play around with it yeah uh i just want to say one last thing and that's just that aliens their first hazard is the what are we supposed to use harsh language where everybody gets all of the damage in their hands taken out that fuck sucks. that fuck that hazard <laughs> so much <laughs> yeah that's so bad. It's five a- players it's the worst because then you just like oh well let's just let five aliens move on in and then you can't keep up with them. <laughs> yeah. But, I mean, yeah, exactly. it's what happened in the movie. Exactly. But still, <laughs> fuck it. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. So that wraps up uh, pretty much all of our coverage for Alien and Predator Legendary Encounters games. Yes. So, uh, good games. Check them out. Absolutely. So, episode wrap-up type stuff. Mm-hmm. Just want to mention again, in case you missed the bumper that will probably be at the beginning depending on Zach's editing. We are now members of Punchboard Media. Oh, right. Yeah. Yes. Oh, right. I need to, I need to download those I think we And I think we got some bumpers. So hopefully you'll hear some bumpers. If you didn't, maybe they're coming at the end. Maybe yeah. we'll just cut this whole part out. And, yeah. and maybe we you will. won't know it, that it, we had this conversation. Yeah. <laughs> it might be next week. We'll see. Yeah. yeah. Aside from that, Jeff, we got an email. We did. Narrowly keeping you from murdering yourself. I, I, as I referenced earlier, maybe you heard it or not. I know how to tie a noose with shoelaces. <laughs> Do you not? So keep sending Jeff emails so we don't have him put this skill to use. Emails at milehighgameguys.com if you would like to have an email on the show. Um, this one comes from Rob, uh, titled Denver. I like uh, it. Yeah. It's a cool uh, place. Yeah, I heard it's pretty great. Uh, hey, guys. Rob is the name. Love the podcast. My girlfriend and I are going to be attending the Rocky Mountain Vacation starting June 4th. Rocky Mountain Gaming Vacation. Gaming Vacation. Isn't that what I said? No, you You said Rocky Mountain Vacation. Rocky Mountain Gaming Vacation. There we go. Uh, It'll be our first time traveling for a game event of any sort. Uh, Not sure how much you guys know about this event, as we have just discovered it ourselves just this last year. Uh, It takes place in Breckenridge and has a small gamer, uh, and is a small gamer takeover of a small mountain resort. Uh, hoping it'll be a good time. Would have been cool if you guys could have been part of the event, maybe in the future. I remember Oopsies. hearing hearing about that, but I, have, I, I am very well aware of this. Edward and Amanda from Heavy Cardboard are going to be up there for like a day. Okay. Um, I want to do stuff with this in the future. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Going up to the mountains and hanging out in a resort and playing board games. Yeah. Sign me up. 100%. Uh, <laughs> and I would agree. I would love to be a part of this. So, Rob, if you... Get to talk to anybody <laughs> vaguely official. Push the product, Rob. Push the product. <laughs> Push it. <laughs> Push it real good. Email continues. Indeed, yes. Anyway, the specific reason for uh, my contact is that we'll be staying downtown Denver on June 3rd. Uh, we fly in that afternoon and are looking for a good place to hang out on Saturday night. Uh, we are aware it will likely be busy everywhere on Saturday night, especially if you're staying downtown by Lodo. Holy shit, don't go around there on yeah. Saturday night. Nope. Uh, but since... Uh, that is one night in Denver we have. I'd like to make the best of it. Don't go to Lodo. Uh, <laughs> we have tentative plans to meet up with some others who are attending the event the following days. Uh, they, too, are staying in Denver that one night. We are looking for good beer and, if possible, a little table space. I always hear of your game nights, and they sound ideal for what we would enjoy. So I think you can help me out. Hoping to make this trip extra fun for my girlfriend. Uh, as I am hoping this will be her gateway drug for her into the gaming trip world. So looking to make it extra memorable. Any advice or help would be much appreciated. Uh, a long shot, but I'm sure a few days notice for a Saturday night. But if any of you guys are doing nothing, I would love to buy you a round of beers. Cheers, Rob. Well, I'll twist my arm. <laughs> buy me a beer? How dare you, sir? Uh, no, you emailed the right people to find a place to play board games in Denver yep. on a Saturday night. You're right, some places will be kind of busy, but depending on how many people it is, we know some good spots mm-hmm. that are very gamer-friendly and would love to totally meet up and play some games. So uh, we will be emailing you back and coordinating that. And yes. Super glad you like the show. Like yeah. you said, if you meet anybody who runs the Rocky Mountain Gaming Vacation, feel free to uh, 
be awesome and spread the good word Indeed. about the Mile High Game guys. Because that's what we need. Yeah. Word of mouth. It's very powerful. Yes. Uh, and that was emails at milehighgameguys.com if you would like to email us. Uh, on Twitter, I asked specific permission to share this, and it is paraphrased a little bit. Uh, but we got to meet Tom at Geekway, and apparently last episode I called him Matt. I don't know where that came from. You and mispronouncing or just misremember- misremembering I, things? That's crazy talk. It, that seems egregious. Mm-hmm. I, yeah, I don't know where that would have came from, but apparently it did happen. <laughs> I, I remember Not- editing a bunch of it. Adrian's like, blah, 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 and Jeff's like, don't you mean this? <laughs> <laughs> that never happens. Uh-huh, 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 okay. Uh-huh, yes. Anyway, he sent me a private message uh, shortly after Geekway, after we'd recorded last week's episode, so it was too late to include last week. But he says, and I asked him if I could share this, Uh he says, FYI, I am three episodes in, and I think MHGG may be one of my new favorite gaming podcasts, as it is the closest reflection of my current gaming group. Beers, swearing, and a mix of gaming tastes. I know all too well how it is being the heavy gamer who has to play Blood Rage, social games, and other light games just to get my occasional deep game to the table. I could find another heavy group, but I'd rather hang with really good friends. This all resonates within the show. Keep up the good work. That's from Tom. Sweet. Thanks, Tom. Um, We also put up with Adrian. Yes, we do. The only (laughs) mistake there is that I have found another heavy game group, and these people aren't friends. (laughs) <laughs> They're really mean to me, and it hurts. But deep. us people, multiple times you've said that you're a masochist, so which is why I'm still here. Exactly, makes him feel alive. <laughs> yeah. That's why we play legendary encounters. Yep. Yes. He's it just all about weird. that sexual gratification, <laughs> glutton for punishment. Yep. What was it? Was it Paul who did not realize that masochism and sadism had a sexual component? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah. there's that. Yep. Um, that was the main thing we got from Twitter. But yeah, thanks for tuning in for another episode of the Mile High Game Guys That's Board it. Gaming Podcast. That's it. That's everything. We've talked about everything. Everything ever. If you would like to get in touch with us, you can tweet me at MHGameGuys. I am Zach underscore MHGG. And I'm Jeff underscore MHGG. You can get a hold of us through our Board Game Geek Guild, which is guild number 2731. Hopefully, Zach will be much more timely with his posts for upcoming episodes. I hope he's even later. <laughs> I'm doing it right now. <laughs> I hope he posts them on Tuesdays. Yes. <laughs> hey, we already recorded, but would you like to fill in your thoughts? Uh, you but if also, you want, if you want thoughts like uh, after the episode, you can feel still free to put go them back there. Exactly, and chime yeah. into that thread. We do check back in on those threads mm-hmm. uh, from past episodes. Um, Zach spends time writing those. I do. They're, does. they're not just copy paste. They're sh- they're solid posts. Yeah. There's links and shit. Yep. There's content in there. Oh yeah. Uh, there's not also, quality, but there's there is <laughs> yes. quantity. I did not which, say quality which content. Which is the theme of this podcast. Yep. Uh, you can also get all of us uh, through our Facebook page or our Instagram, both at Mile High Game Guys. And if we're you're on ever that, in the Denver area, reach out. Yeah. Uh, we're on that punchboardmedia.com. And we are now proud members of Punchboard Media, punchboardmedia.com. Mm-hmm. You can see all the other awesome content creators that we are now partnered with mm-hmm. and will hopefully be working with in the near future. We are... Two weeks away from our one-year anniversary. Yes. There will be all kinds of shenanigans on that episode, I am sure. I think we're just going to start drinking before we start. Yeah, I'm going to take that Monday off. I'm going to start drinking (laughs) in the morning. Yeah. Yeah. And then we're going to hook these mics up at 6 and just see what happens. And then, yep. And then... I would love to be a fly on the wall at that one. 52 shots for the... (laughs) Yeah. Oh, my God. (laughs) And then it's over. And no more second year because we're all dead. (laughs) Going out with a bang. Yes. Just one and done. I think that's good. Yeah. (laughs) Well, this is the peak. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) And we've come full circle. Yep. We've joked about suicide at the beginning of the episode. Uh-huh. We've joked about it at the end. So we have now lost <laughs> just all of our listeners. Yeah. Anyone who made it to that joke, they were fine with the previous one. So yes. <laughs> Maybe. Probably not. <laughs> anyway, it's been real. It's been fun. Yeah. yeah. Richard, thank you for being on this episode. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for jo- uh, joining us, man. Yep. And next week we will be covering Yokohama. Yes. From Tasty Minstrel Games. 
our very first ever review copy. Wait. We want to be above board knowing that we got this game for totally free. Yep. Uh, as always, I've been your host, Adrian. I'm still Zach. And I'm Queen Jeff. <laughs> And <laughs> thanks for joining us, Richard. Yeah, thank you. It's a you. pleasure having you on the show. Cash over everything. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Bye. 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 Richard, were you going to want to talk about any of the games you did end up playing this weekend? Oh, uh, yeah. Um, yeah. So, uh, while Adrian well, is... Yeah, what's well, so I was going to say. Background. Yeah, just... Yeah. 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 I just wanted to because Adrian was like, Mental Richard, notes. did you play a game? And you're like, I didn't play the game night. And he's like, okay, moving on. Said, moving, on. <laughs> <laughs> moving on to Heavy Con. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone else shut up while I talk about Heavy Con. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Role player. The expansion. Uh, Monsters and Minions expansion. Um, from Keith Bachka. Madaja? Mach. I feel like how long are we gonna let him butcher this? I feel game. like you're going in the wrong direction. Matchka. <laughs> you almost, from you Keith. almost got it. <laughs> you almost got it from Keith M. Keith M. Punchboard Media, where we all bring something to the table. Pull up a chair at punchboardmedia.com. <laughs>